on the uh, video can pause for themselves. There's the beard. There's the beard of the sun. That's where they get their beard in their imagery. There it is, the sun on the horizon. There's the horizon, there's the beard in the water. As above, so below, there's the horizon. There it is. This is all sun worship. These, these lines are all to do with the numbering of the days of procession and the days of the sun going from, that would be June 21st, the solstice. This would be March, this would be Libra, this would be Capricorn. It's all science, it's all, this is the bark, this is the, these are the degrees of the zodiac, these are all degrees of the zodiac, the, these are all angels, this is all solar worship, that's why you see gold, it must be gold because it's the sun. See how big this is, you see these two people here, these three people walking away from this statue, this is how much detail they paid to the sun, Ra. And the Uraeus, this is a Uraeus, we'll get to that in a minute. There's the bullet, the cartouche. There it is. It's all about the glorious sun. And, the, and here we have the two trees, Aries and Libra, you could say. It, but there's always two trees, or in other words, two pillars, or two, two opposites, two of something. Always, duality, they're telling you. But to be balanced, you see, balanced in the middle. This is in the middle path. This is a man who has walked in the middle paths, burst his pineal gland, call this the Uraeus. There you have a, a bird and a serpent. The bird, these have to do with the features in the brain, in the bra -ain. In the brain you have these two animals. There he is. Same story, there's no difference. bird brain because you've got the amygdala in your brain and it comes, it's a bird feature that's in your brain like Ammon's horn, the hippocampus. This is all, this is the pineal gland, this is the serpent that comes forth that opens up, this is when you receive the blood of the Christ, the karast, Ra, and you become illuminated. This is the sign of illumination. This is not demon worship like the church girls tell you, man. Church girls will tell you anything to keep themselves in their own fiction and suffer the consequences. He kills Medusa, yeah? What's that all about? Well, it's about... Perseus is a deacon of Aries. There are three deacons in every sign. 36 deacons. So it's 48 constellations altogether. Perseus is here with Cassiopeia and Cetus. Perseus is at the top of the head, right here, and he chops off the medulla oblongata. This is the lower mind. It takes care of the involuntary functions and everything to do with the flesh. You see? Perseus is the light bringer who destroys the lower nature. See the two wings on his head and the sword? This is our life. This is, Perseus is you. When you reach the illumination and you deal with the lower mind, and get rid of that lower beast, Medusa. I want to introduce you to Jesus Christ. Whoops. Did I say that's Jesus Christ? I did. Where did I get that from? From this guy. And this guy got it from Cyril of Alexandria, Saint Ambrose of Milan, Check out these names. These are old. These are thousands of years old. Saint Epiphanius, Horapollo, Saint Augustine of Hippo, the, the number one church father. What did he say about Jesus Christ and the scarab? Well, let's have a read, shall we? Blessed be the Saviour who was a black beetle or a cockchafer or a maybug or a scarabus. Ra. Scarab. Athanasius Curtius, he was a Jesuit 500 years ago, but a very, very bright and sharp mind. And he says, he assures us that by the Maybug was signified the only begotten Son of God. Because Ra is self-begotten, remember? 
Yeah. Saint Augustus, he was my good Scarabus. He was the only begotten because he created himself and put on a species of mortals, but because he rolled himself in human excrement. That's what the dung does, dung beetle does. And that's in the first pages of this book. Uh, here I have the Emerald Tablets of Toth of Hermes, Enoch. It's the shortest alchemical work with the most truth in it. And this is what it means. It's only that short. And it says this. Truth, certainly. That which there is no doubt. That which is above is from that which is below. And that which is below is from that which is above. Working the miracles of one. As all things were from one. Its father is the sun and its mother is the moon. Cerebrum, Sarah, Abram, Ra, Ra. The sun exalts in Aries, the moon exalts in Taurus. Gold, silver, king, queen. Its father is the sun and its mother is the moon. Now what does that mean? The sun corresponds with the pineal gland in here and the moon corresponds with the pituitary gland in here in the third ventricle on, attached to the optic thalamus. Joseph and Mary. The earth carried it in her belly. Here in the belly, let's put this back the right way, shall we? Here in Virgo, in the bell belly, is the solar plexus. The solar plexus is the place where the seed, the Christ, is born every month, when the moon transits your sun sign. And that psychophysical germ, if saved, Will, will ascend the oil up your spine. And that oil was produced from the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, the sun and the moon. The earth carried it in its belly, in her belly, and the wind nourished it in her belly as earth which shall become fire. Feed the earth from that which is subtle with the greatest power. It ascends from the earth to the heaven and becomes ruler over that which is above and that which is below. And I have already explained the meaning of the whole of this in two of these books of mine. That's it. It's teaching you the alchemical secret of how to ascend the oil. Just the same as the Lord's Prayer. What's the Lord's Prayer all about? Turn your Bibles with me, brothers, and we shall... Uh Indulge in the word of God, shall we? Man, I'm not a very good Jehovah's Witness, am I? There's a witness Bible and I can't find the Lord's Prayer. Ah, <laughs> staring at it. Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. Our Father, you must pray then this way. Let's do this, shall we? Because it looks better when, it, when it's up high. Or, let's do this even better. Our Father who art in heaven, Aries, let your name be sanctified. Let it be holy. This is where holy stuff happens. Let your kingdom come. Let your will take place as in heaven, also upon earth. As above, so below. This is the Emerald Tablets of Toth. It's all ripped off from Egypt. This is an Egyptian book. Give us today our bread. That's the bread. The seed, it's called the bread, the oil, the salt, the chrism, the Christ, the manna from heaven. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. 
And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the wicked one. Temptation is to be a glutton or an alcoholic or an oversexed person or anything that puts that Saturnian acid in your body and destroys the oil. To ascend the oil, always remember to keep your tongue to the roof of your mouth. In meditation, whether you're fighting martial arts, whether you're exercising, going for a walk, always place the tongue up into the roof of your mouth. Psalm 137 verse 6. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Lamentations 4.4. 4. The tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst, spiritual thirst. The young children ask bread, and no man breaketh it unto them. The young children is the lower mind, and if it doesn't receive bread, it dies. You die in your lower mind. Lifting the tongue is what shorts the circuit that will send the kundalini energy up your spine. And this is, you must do this. If you don't do this, your temple is dead. Let the dead bury their dead. To bring yourself alive, you must bring that electrical current up into your brain and activate the dormant brain cells. Trillions of dormant brain cells. Every human has them. And there's only one way to reactivate them. Once that oil ascends, and with the, your tongue up to the roof of the mouth, it enables that process, reactivation of cells, and you have light. Job 29.10, the voices of the nobles were hushed and their tongues stick to the roof of their mouths. Job 20.12, oh, um, the nobles, this is from my friend Richard at hiddenlighthouse.blogspot. Yeah, I apologise that I didn't really, um, oh yeah, com.au. Job 20.12, Though evil is sweet in his mouth, and he hides it under his tongue, the nobles, from Job 29.10, is a symbol of the lower mind, and the thoughts from this mind. They will be hushed when the tongue sticks to the roof of the mouth. One then is able to have the crown chakra pierced, and he is an illuminated chief. An Illuminati. There it is. There it is. And that, and that is, you know, the vision that St. John had in Revelation. The moon, Mercury, Venus, the sun, Mars, Jupiter and, and Saturn. All described in the first chapter of Revelation. Where it says, I beheld the Lord and his face shone like the sun. Well, that's the, that's the sun. <laughs> and he had a sword that issued from his mouth. Well, that's Mars. Mars is the martial one who's ready to fight at the drop of a hat. And he had white hair, you know, because he was the ancient one. Well, that's Saturn, old man Cronus. He's got white hair. It's all grey. He doesn't got any, you know, nice dyed hair. <laughs> um, at the, the belt around the paps. I mean, what's Jesus doing with, you know, with some nice little boobies. Well, and, and what's he doing with a belt around there, like a bra? It's, it's a bra, basically. Well, it's Venus. So he's describing in the first chapter of Revelation, and what happens is these, these are the seven vowels of the creation, the seven planets. These are the Elohim. That's the Elohim. He, he was actually describing the Elohim, the, sol the solar system, our big brother as above. Whatever it does, we do. We've got the sun in here. Um, <clears throat> Marcelo Ficino has had a lot to say about the sun. I just want to quickly just go through some of the posters I brought along, which I was going to spend a lot of time on, but I didn't get a chance to. That's Raphael's Ezekiel's vision. Notice here the bull, the lion, the man, and the eagle. The bull, the lion, the man and the eagle, the four fixed signs of the zodiac. 
Notice these things. <clears throat> Ulysses. Ulysses wandered for 10 years in the oceans. He was a hero. And the sirens are basically just those desires and psychic temptations. And to tie yourself to the centre of the, the ship, the mast of the ship, so that you can be firm in your resolves to resist all those temptations and all those desires and emotions that everybody's getting entangled in. Oh, who's going to win the Olympics? Who's going to win the football? And they believe in it and they go bet, betting on it so that they, you know, they can just get entangled in it. And they just... This is, this is, the, this is the hero. He returned home after 10 years. 10 years is indicative of, our, of a lifetime. That's what the Greeks were talking about when Homer was talking about the, uh, the Odyssey, the wanderings of Ulysses. There it is. In the Bible it talks about the crystalline sea and the Apostle John in Revelation saw the crystalline sea. Well, that's the ninth sphere. And then you have Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, the Moon, and then the eighth sphere is the Moon, the, the Earth. And these are the rings. And Saturn is the Lord of the rings. And this is the emanation where we come from, the primum mobile, unconditioned consciousness. And we go down and we perform 12 labours. And we have seven vices and seven virtues, seven everything, seven days of the week, seven musical notes, seven chakras. These are the Ras. You see, this is the radius. This is Isis, Ra and El. It's all the same science. There it is with the Lamb of God, Rama, up high, always. There it is. As above, so below. You've got to look up, idiot. <laughs> if you don't look up first, well then how are you going to work out what's below? Man is the, the measure of the universe. This temple is the temple of the living God. It's made in the image of God. It's not made in the image of some blueprint found in some dirty old factory. It was made from the crystalline sea, from the primum mobile, where all beautiful forms come from. There is the analema. This is what happens. This figure eight is what happens. Oh, there it is, analema. So what you've got here is every year this is the shape that the sun makes in the sky there you go. That's the eight, the figure eight that the sun makes when it goes from solstice to solstice through equinox. This is the winter portion and this is the summer portion. So you see this is much, much bigger. Okay, yeah, so this is summer starting from, so we've got, let's start from Aries. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. So there's your summer and then you go down for the winter. And you get this, and that's the figure eight. The sun is always making this shape in the skies. This is Karnak in France. Notice the spelling, same as Egyptian. What are all these stones doing there? Megalithic stones in Karnak. Miles and miles of stones. Miles of stones. This is... Konark, Konark, Karnak, Sun Temple in India. They, this, is, this is also in the, the province or the region in India, one of the biggest regions called Orissa. O-R-I-S-S-A. -S -S Orissa is Osiris. Osiris is the sun. And you see these beautiful wheels? There's 24, 24 hours a day. And the carvings in this temple are second to none. This was a work of art. This is equal to the Taj Mahal, Angkor Wat, Karnak. This is how much the sun was loved. This is the sun, Ra. See, people used to know the science and used to pay respect to the science. And they made these, they made these temples, I'll get to that word in a minute, to memorialize the God therein. This is the memorial of the sun and saying thank you to the sun for giving us life and sustaining us. Today, we just go to McDonald's, you know, and, and 
and eat plastic poo and therefore you've got a society of people who have got mushy brains. They, they know nothing. They look at this and they go, oh, don't look what the devil did. Oh, Satan is, is trying to destroy the believers. Look what the unbelievers are doing. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, this is from the book Astrology of the Old Testament or The Lost Word Regained, Carl Anderson. And he calls this the brazen serpent. Joseph, otherwise it is the sign, Sagittarius started, Joseph became governor over Egypt, whose king are Phara, the sun. And that's the path of the sun, the brazen serpent of Moses. There it is, the bow of Joseph, the bark of Ra, the rain bow. This is from the book, this is from the devil's pulpit. People, if you ever want to be, read the best astrological treatise in the world, the devil's pulpit, Robert Taylor, Aries, and you'll notice that he's put the symbol of Pisces here because what he's doing is very, very ingenious. He's actually putting, there's Aries, Taurus and Gemini, but you've got Aries, Taurus and Gemini over here. But the glyphs are not corresponding because he's showing how the stars have actually slipped 30 degrees backward. They're, they're, they're always going to be slipping. They're always, so he, when we reach Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, the ram will slip over to here. And then in 4,000 years, it'll be over here. So that's called processional slippage, but it does not affect astrology because astrology is determined by this point here and the angle of the sun and its light. And that's what creates an Arian. That's what creates a Taurian. This angle produces a Geminian. This angle produces a Cancerian, etc. There it is. Isis. Ra, Isis or nature, son of sun, Ra, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, there's the sine wave, this is a hundred years ago, the star, the moon, the sun, and as they ride along the ecliptic, the brazen serpent of Moses, they foretell and prophesy all the things to come, this is why the prophets of God were respected, now have a look at this al Tao. Taurus, Altau, that's where we get the word altar. That's why the altar will always be at the top of the cathedral. Brahm, Ram, the ram. This was in Caesar's time with the three elements, Aum. Aum stands for omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence and immortality. Om Om, om, om. Yeah, mother, exactly. There's the image of gold, silver, bronze, and iron. If it's not astrology, it's nothing else. It means nothing else. This is Pisces, iron and clay, and then God's kingdom comes in the age of Pisces and destroys this kingdom. We go into the age of Aquarius, where we go into the mind, and, and we... We become knowing ones rather than believing and doubting ones of Pisces. Pisces is belief and doubt. Aquarius, which is the shins, is an air sign. It's about knowing. There she is, Boas and Jackin. This is the tarot cards. Please notice, Torah. I wonder why she has Torah. What's the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, got to do with that role? Let's have a look, shall we? This is the key 10 in, in tarot. This is the 10th card. It's called the wheel. The wheel of fortune. And you'll notice Yod, He, Va, He, Jehovah. And you'll notice T, A, R, O, T is tarot. And backwards it's Torah. T, O, R, A. And then when you mirror image it, everything needs to be reversed. You have Rota. Rota is to rotate, which is the wheel, which is the will of God. 
And here is the cherubs. Yeah, Rotary Club, that's what it's all about. It, of course it is. The Rotary Club are not the Rotary Club because they just like the sound of rota. <laughs> it's because they all go back to the wheel. Everything, because the universe is made of spheres and cubes. And you notice the bull, the lion, Scorpio and Aquarius. And these are the four faces of God. In, in Daniel, Ezekiel and Revelation. The bull, the lion, the eagle and the man. There's a lot more there that I can go into but we don't have the time. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. The world. This is the world that we walk through. We go through this world. Here is the... <laughs> this is... It does, doesn't it? It looks like a casino table, doesn't it? What, what do you think uh, Russian roulette? What is roulette if it's not from Ra? And you take your chances by throwing a ball. It's all about those orbs and the wheel. These are the 22 tarot cards, okay? You've got 12 signs of the zodiac and you have 10 planets. Here we have the moon at 88 days, uh, Mercury at 88 days, the moon. 29 and a half days. There's Venus, 225 days. 365 days is the Earth. Two years is Mars. 12 years is Jupiter. 29 and a half years is Saturn. 84 years is Uranus. 165 years is Neptune. 248 years is Pluto. And these are the cards. Let's start from the Fool, and that corresponds with Uranus, the Fool. The Magician corresponds with Mercury. The Empress corresponds with Venus. You can see the sign of Venus there. 222 days. There she is. The Emperor. You'll notice the Rams. Heads. The emperor is Aries. Emperor means to rule, the king, the highest position. These allocations for these cards are probably based on Paul Foster case. Would they be? Uh, Where did you get? Okay. All right. Well, these have all been cross-checked. Uh, cross I'm not saying that I agree 100% with these. And I'm not a great authority to be able to prove that or to be able to, but, but I, the way I see things is the way they stand out to me. And I, I see that as the emperor. I see that the, the second card. I see the hierophant as Taurus. I see the lovers as Gemini. The next one, Cancer, the chariot. Remember the chariot, the bark of Ra, crab, up at Cancer? That's the chariot, and you see the moon symbology everywhere. That's unmistakable, no-brainer. The lion, Leo. The hermit, Virgo. And, and here they've got key 11, which is justice for Libra. And that's a perfect allocation, it's fantastic. To get to justice from the hermit, you have to throw that card out. But if you were to leave that card there as Libra, and then this is Scorpio, justice and death, in the eighth house, and then if you were to go continue in that logic, and you have the hangman for the 21st of December when the sun is upside down and crucified on the shortest day, that would be Sagittarius. And what you would have for Capricorn would be death where the death of the sun occurs. So Aquarius would be that, as opposed to the star, which also has water. So there's two that have water. You would place Aquarius there. The devil I would have for Pisces because of the band. You see how these two fish, if this were Pisces, and the band was joining them together, like the fish of Pisces are joined together. Not everybody agrees with this placement of the tarot cards, but I've put it up there and 
this is probably the most accurate uh, allocations for the cards that there are. But if you want to go along with, with my uh, allocations, as, as I've done it uninterruptedly, that also works. Fibonacci, 800 years ago. That's the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio. One, two, three, five, eight. Growth at 1.618. Phi, the golden mean. Notice the numbers, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55. This is, this is 1, this is 1.618. This is the DNA. Or we are receptinary. Everything in our bodies is septenary. The seven chambers of the brain, seven chambers of the heart, the seven orifices in the body, the seven vital organs, etc., etc. Everything about our nature is septenary. It's a serpent. That's the serpent. And uh, the serpent is sitting, sitting here. Um, a fucus is in the sign of Scorpio. <coughs> Let's have a look at Scorpio. Scorpio with the red, red star in it. Okay. Um, there is a fucus, the serpent bearer. So a fucus, what he does, he's carrying the serpent and the serpent's head is right next to the scales of Libra. You see, we, we saw that before, right? And the serpent is, is saying to the, the woman, and Booty's her husband is, is Adam, this is Eve, Virgo, it's saying to her, eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is the good, this is the evil. And the scales <coughs> are denoting that because once the sun goes through these signs, it comes to a point where it has to flip over its polarity. It's given an electric summer, but now it has to change its nature. And it must flip that polarity and give, produce a winter. So it tastes from the tree of good and evil, having tasted good, now it must have evil. And that's the serpent that is at the tree deceiving the woman because she eats from it first. Booties follows. So let's have a look at uh, the four horsemen, shall we, of the apocalypse. Uh, the white horse symbolises the vernal equinox. The red horse symbolises the autumnal equinox. The black horse, the winter solstice. That's where black satin is. And the pale horse, or green, symbolises the summer solstice. You see... Green and lush is that horseman of the apocalypse, that cardinal point. And as those, you see, the sun is always depicted, the sun is always depicted being transported around with four horses. Okay, four seasons, four horses, four uh, cardinal points. And, um, and as they go around, they have different natures and different qualities. Of course, the, uh, this, these are very similar. The equinoxes, right? Spring and autumn are very similar, but summer and winter, big difference. Okay? White is the colour of the good spirit and in its mythical aspects correlates astronomically to the vernal equinox. Red, the opposite or opponent counterpart of white in much of the symbolism and represents the autumnal equinox. Matter is counterbalanced by spirit just as the autumnal equinox is counterbalanced by the vernal equinox. So the red horse is the autumnal equinox, the controller of the entrance into the infernal regions of the lower hemisphere. Black signifies the darkness of the pit of the lower world where the sun is shrouded by dark blackness. Green represents the verdant quality of the summer season brought in by the summer solstice. The Bible uses the term pale horse but all of the biblical dictionaries define the term pale as synonymous to the colour green. Now, the riders on the horses, they are different. The riders on the horses, one has a scale, that's Libra. And these are the riders of the horses, okay? Uh, the riders of the horses are distinct and separate from the horses in terms of their identity. One reason that other scholars over the years and centuries have failed to interpret this symbolism correctly is that they have blended the individual riders and their assigned horses into single entities, which is an error. 
The riders of the four horses are the zodiacal signs that pass over the stations of the horses, cardinal points. During the day, year or astrological era that may be targeted by the symbolism, the descriptions of the riders give us sufficient information for their identities. He that sat on the white horse had a bow and a crown, which indicates the sector of Sagittarius. Bow and a crown. Um, <clears throat> with the, the bow. Uh, the bow is um, Chaos Australis. That's the bow in the sector of Sagittarius. Um, and the crown is Corona Australis. Remember we spoke about Corona Borealis in uh, Libra, the crown of thorns. Well, this is Corona Australis of that sector. He that sat on the red horse is described as a killer and a disruptor of peace, which indicates the killer scorpion that carries the sting of death, whose venom ushers in the sorrow and misery of the winter season, as the sun dips below the equinoxes, into the sector of Scorpio. He that sat on the black horse carried balances in his hand, which of course is the scales of Libra. He that sat on the pale green horse was called Death and the governor of Hell, which is of course Saturn in Capricorn the well-known goat devil of the zodiac. And of course, this corresponds with the dragon that drew a third part of the stars of heaven. Have you ever heard, heard of that in Revelation? And I saw the dragon and he hurled a third of God's stars from heaven, right? Well, the constellation of Dra Draco uh, is in uh, Sagittarius, but it goes from goes from Virgo all the way down to Scorpio. That's exactly a third, 120 degrees of arc is occupied by Draco on the northern throne. It's a big constellation in the north. We can't see it, but it's up, up there where the, the Big Dipper is and all that. And Draco controls the North Pole. He gets about three stars to sit on the North Pole during the 24,000 year processional cycle. So he's basically the boss, right? And when Draco goes down, when Draco goes down, in other words, from Virgo downwards, this is the sign of betrayal, Virgo, the dragon hurls a third of God's angels down to the earth. We are told by these verses of the Bible that the dragon's tail drew a third of the stars of heaven this symbolism points directly to the zodiacal signs Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius and Capricorn, which are situated right in the fold of the dragon's tail. I have explained conclusively in book four, he's got his five books here, that the dragon of the apocalyptic heavens of the Bible symbolises the constellation Draconis uh, with the stellar symbolism. The tail of the biblical dragon of the heavens in the Bible is synonymous to the tail of the cosmic dragon, which is in fact the constellation Draconis. The constellation of Draconis stretches over nearly half of the sky's celestial longitude. And at the time of the uh, biblical editing, the tail of Draconis traversed the span of the zodiac stretching from the autumnal equinox through the winter solstice, a span of four zodiacal constellations, thus denoting the fall of the sun into the lower regions of the cosmos as demarcated by the celestial equator. Right guys, so the remedy, what's the remedy? We want a remedy because there's enough of suffering. There's plenty of that, we're all suffering. And um, is there a remedy? Can you get out of it? Well, there is, but you need to be ready for it. Um, if you still like to hang on to all those things that you've registered for and that you believe in so much, uh, like um, bank accounts, driving licenses, driving means to do commerce, that's commerce.
Do you want to do that or do you want to travel and journey when you get into your car? Because last time I checked, <clears throat> you don't need a licence to go from A to B. And who says so? Who says you do? Everywhere else in the universe, I don't know whether they've got a, uh, you know, like a licence in the back pocket when they hop in some vessel or do some astral travelling or whatever. However, they, there's, the universe is populated with beings. <laughs> it's just endless. Giordano Bruno died for saying that 400 years ago, that he said everything's populated with beings. And he knew that. He didn't, that was not his opinion. <clears throat> and they don't have a licence. So if you want to lose that stuff, lose it all, wherever that corporate name, that cap <laughs> capitio, mm, capitus, that's it, capitus diminutio maxima, maxima. <clears throat> wherever that name is to be found, you need to wipe out the trace of it wherever it exists. It's the mark of the beast. The name is the mark of the beast. It's absolutely the mark of the beast and I don't, not fussed whether, whether people don't understand that or um, don't believe it. That's what it is. In their system, let's wipe out these guys, eh? Yeah. Consciousness. Look at that. It can be done. We can start a new, a new world of more loving, subtle light energies, of enlightenment, and get rid of this education and you know, put a square on their head when they graduate by degrees. 360, astrology. <clears throat> the one that's from the devil and it's condemned in the Bible. Shh! Let's not talk about anything else that's condemned or the other stuff they use in the churches. The churches are... 90% of all the trouble. Not 50 and then and 50 something else. The churches, their blood guilty, stained with blood on their skirts. It's all blood. Prophets and seers and herbalists and astrologers and good, good people have been killed by these animalistic entities. There's a photo that the Pope in the late uh, 1800s, that's a photo blessing the troops. Spill a bit of that blood, boys. It's all good. You get to God by doing that. These are our brothers. Don't, please don't ever read and believe the trash in the history books from the institutions of Rome where they tell you that those martyrs in the first and second century were Christians. They were not literalist Christians. They were Gnostic Christians, Neoplatonists, Hermetists, people from Serapis in Alexandria. That was the chief religion around the time when Rome <coughs> was killing people. There were the Essenes in the Middle East, the Therapeutae, the Telestoi, the, uh, the, the followers of Basilides, the Gnostic, they burned all these books. Porphyry was a, was a Gnostic. They burned all his books because he spoke out against the literalist Christians, these guys. <coughs> they were hermetists and people that knew who they were. That's who you are. <coughs> Not what's your name. Any other word, adjective, noun that you want to put after that is misleading and a lie. There is nothing but being and the now. And they pull you out of that with a thing called, in Latin, whoops, I need to stop being dyslexic uh, <laughs> again. Nomen, that's the word for na name. They give you one of those. And they want to you to have a Christian name. What's your Christian name? <laughs> Interesting. It's corporation, that Christian empire of Rome that rules the earth. 
a pillaging and land grabbing and stealing the Aborigines. Aborigines, not Origines. They don't call them Origines because that's original. Ab deprives them of originality in Latin. And therefore they tell you the Aborigines. And then Hollywood is these cowboys killing the bad Indians. You know, all those cowboys, John Wayne and we're going to kill us some Indians, you know. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> they did it. And it wasn't the Hermetists. It was the Christian corporations. They are liars and deceivers and the scum of the earth. And they need to be closed down. All churches will be closed down. I'm announcing that today. 2nd of May. That's, that's gone out to the universe. They will be closed down soon in your lifetime before your eyes. They must be. The fiction is up. I've got enough proof on my YouTube videos, let alone Dupuis, Volney, Manly P. Hall, Alvin Boyd Kuhn, Thomas H. Burgoyne, the Reverend Robert Taylor who went to jail twice in 1830 for teaching down at the roundabout, you know, the devil's pulpit. So in the book that you can get on Amazon with his 24 sermons in there, get it. <laughs> Get it, read it. That was at the roundabout or whatever, the rotunda, that's it. The sermon's at the rotunda. It's titled, The Devil's Pulpit. And he called himself that. <laughs> he said, I'm the devil. I'm the devil to the priestcraft because they don't want to know that the pastors should be teaching astrology because that's what astors is. Astro and pastor, same word. Minister, moon star, deacons, cardinals, I can go on, nun, monseigneur, moon, goes on and on. It's all from the stars and yet those, there's a historical Jesus that's going to save you. Come to church, he's coming in the clouds, in the white one over there. Jesus will save you and keep taking the Prozac and the aspartame and drink the fluoride, it's good for your teeth. <clears throat> in Spanish, hombre... Que es tu no, que es tu, mm, all right, hombre is man, okay, man. When they ask you que es tu nombre, nombre is name. Mm, I wonder what the end's all about. Uh, have you ever seen words like uh, no, not, never, negate? Pay attention to that one. We'll get back to that one. Uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, nowhere. Nobody. All the negate words. Uh, that's what the end's there for, people. No man. You see, when Moses says to Jehovah in the burning bush, he says, uh, he says who are you? Who shall I say sent me? When Pharaoh says, uh, who are you? And uh, who sent you? Because you, you go as an emissary, don't you? See, God sent him. He says, you go down and get my people out of Israel. And this burning bush. And so Moses is like, well, who shall I? And what does God say? I am. I am that I am. Because he was teaching Moses a lesson. If you're doing, you're not being. If you're thinking, you're not knowing. And guess what? Good old Rome gets us to do all that thinking in the left brain by teaching us to write and do everything with the right brain so you, they polarise you in the left brain, which is thinking, doing. This is being <clears throat> the hermetic right brain, which is connected to the cerebrum. Remember the cherubim covering over? The cerebellum, that's the man brain. That's the small brain, because cere cerebellum means that, small brain. That's connected to the left side. That's Taurus and Aries. This is, this is the man, the bull, L, the phallic. And they've stuck us in there and we think we've got a name and we are our bodies. Don't take any entheogens that might give you an out-of-body experience and then you look at your body and you go, oh, wow, so I'm not my body, I'm this, I am. And that's what the, the samurai masters in Japan, <clears throat> to make someone so courageous in war, how do you do it? You've got to eliminate the fear of death. Because if you're not scared of dying, you're the most courageous warrior on the field and you lead. 
See, they don't like warriors anymore. They make soldiers. Last time I checked, uh, soldi, soldi in my language, in Italian, is money. Paid killers. Not warriors. What they did to those warriors, those initiates that went to the school to, to learn karate and get up there and, as the best karate masters and whatever, and, and samurai that would go out into battle and just fight like death is a beautiful thing. Not like the, the idiots that go and join these corporate um, government, uh, government corporate armies and go fight in Gallipoli and, and stuff like that. And then every year on the 11th of the 11th, we have to remember this bullshit killing machine because that gets into the psyche of people that we need the military industrial compl complex going because there's terrorists out there. Um, <clears throat> Soldi is a paid thug. What they did to these uh, initiates is they, the master knew where to press in the body. I don't know where the, the, the points are, but they would press on certain points. According to Manly P. Hall, who discusses this on his, in his audio files and books, they would put pressure on a certain part and kill the initiate. Big favour. That's a big favour. You're making, you're making a man now, a god, by killing him and then reviving him by putting pressure on another part of the head, the soul and the spirit comes back into the body. They've just come from an out-of-body experience. And they've seen their bodies lying there. And this is science. This is nature. This is how it is. We're not just this lump of body that evolves from you know, unconscious matter and then all of a sudden consciousness is a side, of, a side effect of all of those permutations in nature and all that bullshit that Darwin teaches. Um, so when the soldier, he would look down and see his body and he'd go, hey, shit, this eternity, this nowness that I'm in, this godship that I've inherited by leaving that body, this unconditioned consciousness, I want to get back to here. But I want to get back into that body, go out and fight for truth, if I have to, and teach people the science of this. And then the priest would do another favour, revive the person, and then that person will never have fear of death again because there ain't no such thing. And that's what the schools around the Mediterranean, you see Rome destroyed Alexandria, that's naughty, too much Gnosticism down there. Uh, libraries, a lot of science. What we'll do is we'll tell the world that we burned that library down, but what we'll in really do is we'll grab the books and put them in the vaults at the Vatican and don't let anybody ever read them. We stole them off the libraries, off you people, and you ain't going to read them because we run the world and we keep you in ignorance because those books have got science in there that would delight you and save you. Um, <clears throat> That's right where Jesus is right now when he's with his 12 apostles. See, this is Jesus and his 12 apostles. Leonardo da Vinci here showed... See, so you've got the 12, the 12 um, pillars here. These are, these are the 12 stations, and this is the temple of God, right? Here are, here are the seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And there's so many little telltale signs to help you, and there's clues that the genius Leonardo da Vinci put in this picture. Aries. <clears throat> now, it's been cut off here. I don't know why, but there's, it's a bit longer here, but Aries... Aries is always the head. You start your horoscopes there, you start everything with Aries. It's the right ascension, the lot. Everything starts here. The, the day, the year, this is the spring. This used to be called Primus. This month was called Primus. Primus, Segundus, Tertius, Quartus, Quintus, Sestus. And then guess what's over here? September, the ninth month. Because Aries is the first. It's always the first, and it's the head. Here's Aries, Taurus. See Gemini? That's Gemini. Remember our little... <coughs> remember our little man? Whoops. Have a look at the third guy, Aries, Taurus. Look at Gemini. What's he doing with his hands? Yeah, he's telling you, this is the sign of duality, guys. Pollux and Castor. 
See the, this guy here? He's got a knife in his hand, pointing backwards. He's the crabby crab of cancer. Leo, he's the guy that's the only one that's lean, leaning on the table. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's actually the, you know, he's the boss, Leo. All the others are staying away from the table. Then you've got here, obviously, a feminine, very, very feminine Virgo. She's also got her hands together because it's a mutable sign. The mutable signs have two, tunus. Let's go to the other tunus. Here we go, Sagittarius. See his two hands together here? And see the last sign, Pisces? Um, he's got his two hands. He's going like this. Right? <clears throat> um, look at this. Who's that? Libra. You see, the, you see what this feminine apostle is doing? It's going like that. The scales of Libra. Because... That's the scales of Libra, and it's ruled by Venus, and it's, and it's got that feminine thing about it because of Venus. And obviously all the effeminate ones are, see, there's male, female, male, female, male, female. That's how it works in the science, because we're talking about electricity and magnetism. That's all it is. It's all it is throughout the whole of the mythologies. Wherever you go in the mythological world, where do you go to the Sufis of the Muslims, the Gnostics of the Christians, the Hermetists, the Buddhists, wherever you go, guys, it's all about this, and I haven't even scratched the surface. You know, I regret that. I need hours and hours to get all this stuff out. There's so much stuff I can't, can't go down. But if you really look at that, you'll see um, here the crab is pointing to the throat of Virgo to um, point to the fact that the Adam's apple is not there. That's a girl. There's so many signs, guys. Guys, it's saturated with it. This is the sun, and by the way, it's here. This is the Passover, and they're eating bread, because the bread is Virgo. Virgo gives the bread. She's the, 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 the season of the harvest, so that's why they're eating bread. Now, or you can even have it here at the Easter, because what do we have here? Hot cross buns. What's the cross on the bun for? Well, it's the crossing of the sun. That's why when the Jews hear, they will, go, they will go and celebrate Passover because the sun has passed over into here. And this is the exaltation of the sun. The sun is resurrected. You see? And by the way, this day is the beginning of their sacred calendar, Nisan. And this day is the beginning of their secular calendar. Aries, there are three deacons in every sign. 36 deacons, so it's 48 constellations altogether. Perseus is here with Cassiopeia and Cetus. Perseus is at the top of the head, right here, and he chops off the medulla oblongata. This is the lower mind. It takes care of the involuntary functions and everything to do with the flesh, you see? Perseus is the light bringer who destroys the lower nature. See the two wings on his head and the sword? This is our life. This is, Perseus is you when you reach the illumination and you deal with the lower mind and get rid of that lower beast, Medusa. I want to introduce you to Jesus Christ. Whoops. Did I say that's Jesus Christ? I did. Where did I get that from? From this guy. And this guy got it from Cyril of Alexandria, Saint Ambrose of Milan. Check out these names. These are old. These are thousands of years old. Saint Epiphanius, Horapollo, Saint Augustine of Hippo. The the number one church father? What did he say about Jesus Christ and the scarab? Well, let's have a read, shall we? Blessed be the Saviour who was a black beetle or a cockchafer or a maybug or a scarabus. Ra, scarab. Athanasius Curtius, 
He was a Jesuit 500 years ago, but a very, very bright and sharp mind. And he says, he assures us that by the Maybug was signified the only begotten Son of God. Because Ra is self-begotten, remember? Yeah. Saint Augustus, he was my good Scarabus. He was the only begotten because he created himself and put on a species of mortals, but because he rolled himself in human excrement. That's what the dung does, dung beetle does. And that's in the first pages of this book. Uh, here I have the Emerald Tablets of Toth of Hermes, Enoch. It's the shortest alchemical work with the most truth in it. And this is what it means. It's only that short. And it says this. Truth, certainly. That which there is no doubt. That which is above is from that which is below. And that which is below is from that which is above. Working the miracles of one. As all things were from one. Its father is the sun and its mother is the moon. Cerebrum, Sarah, Abram, Ra, Ra. The sun exalts in Aries, the moon exalts in Taurus. Gold, silver, king, queen. Its father is the sun and its mother is the moon. Now what does that mean? The sun corresponds with the pineal gland in here and the moon corresponds with the pituitary gland in here in the third ventricle on, attached to the optic thalamus. Joseph and Mary. The earth carried it in her belly. Here in the belly. Let's put this back the right way, shall we? Here in Virgo, in the bell belly, is the solar plexus. The solar plexus is the place where the seed, the Christ, is born every month when the moon transits your sun sign. And that psychophysical germ, if saved, will, will ascend the oil up your spine. And that oil was produced from the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, the sun and the moon. The earth carried it in its belly, in her belly, and the wind nourished it in her belly as earth which shall become fire. Feed the earth from that which is subtle with the greatest power. It ascends from the earth to the heaven and becomes ruler over that which is above and that which is below. And I have already explained the meaning of the whole of this in two of these books of mine. That's it. It's teaching you the alchemical secret of how to ascend the oil. Just the same as the Lord's Prayer. What's the Lord's Prayer all about? Turn your Bibles with me, brothers, and we shall uh, indulge in the Word of God, shall we? Man, I'm not a very good Jehovah's Witness, am I? There's a Witness Bible, and I can't find the Lord's Prayer. Ah, <laughs> staring at it. Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. Our Father, you must pray then this way. Let's do this, shall we? Because it looks better when, it, when it's up high. Or, let's do this even better. Our Father who art in heaven, Aries, let your name be sanctified. Let it be holy. This is where holy stuff happens. Let your kingdom come. Let your will take place as in heaven, also upon earth. As above, so below. This is the Emerald Tablets of Toth. It's all ripped off from Egypt. This is an Egyptian book. 
Give us today our bread. That's the bread. The seed, it's called the bread, the oil, the salt, the chrism, the Christ, the manna from heaven. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the wicked one. Temptation is to be a glutton, or an alcoholic, or an oversexed person, or anything that puts that Saturnian acid in your body and destroys the oil. To ascend the oil, always remember to keep your tongue to the roof of your mouth. In meditation, whether you're fighting martial arts, whether you're exercising, going for a walk, always place the tongue up into the roof of your mouth. Psalm 137, verse 6. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Lamentations 4.4 4. The tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst, spiritual thirst. The young children ask bread and no man breaketh it unto them. The young children is the lower mind. And if it doesn't receive bread, it dies. You die in your lower mind. Lifting the tongue is what shorts the circuit that will send the kundalini energy up your spine. And this is, you must do this. If you don't do this, your temple is dead. Let the dead bury their dead. To bring yourself alive, you must bring that electrical current up into your brain and activate the de dormant brain cells. Trillions of dormant brain cells. Every human has them. And there's only one way to reactivate them. Once that oil ascends, and with the, your tongue up to the roof of the mouth, it enables that process, reactivation of cells, and you have light. Job 29.10 The voices of the nobles were hushed, and their tongues stick to the roof of their mouths. Job 20.12 oh, um, The nobles, this is from my friend Richard at Hidden lighthouse dot blogspot yeah I apologize that I didn't really um oh yeah com dot au Job twenty twelve though evil is sweet in his mouth and he hides it under his tongue the nobles from Job twenty nine ten is a symbol of the lower mind and the thoughts from this mind. They will be hushed when the tongue sticks to the roof of the mouth. Walter Russell, The Secret of Light, showing how all of this is about light. Light we can see, light we can't see. God is light. There is but one thing in the universe, light. The still light of all knowing. That's it. Let's stop there and have a think about that, shall we? <laughs> There's only one thing in the universe. The still light of knowing. Remember I said this is mind. This is the universe thinking. This is the universe thinking. The one light which is God. God alone lives. His thinking and imagining is knowing. The knowing universe is all that is. Knowing mind is still. There is no activity whatsoever in the universe of either spirit or matter. Man's present civilization is erected upon the foundation of empirical knowledge obtained through the senses. What is empirical knowledge? The definition in the dictionary is conclusions founded upon experiment and observation alone. Hey, you see the scientists of the world, oh, it's, we did experiments and it's proven in the laboratory. Our five senses directed us to this information. We're geniuses. We can make smartphones. In other words, the so-called knowledge upon which man relies is founded upon the evidence of his senses, or more simply, upon the non-existent waves of motions 
of a non-existent substance. So all these clowns out there who adore and worship scientists, you know, these idiots that persecute animals in their laboratories so they can, get, they can you know, develop poisonous toxins to sell and patent to big pharma so they can put shit in people and kill them more. And these scientists ponce around, I'm a scientist! Oh, oh I'm a scientist! <laughs> and they base their knowledge on non-existent waves of motion, of a non-existent... You see, the Holy Land, this is, this is, the, this is the 32 bone, uh, 33 bones that make the spinal, uh, the spinal, cord, uh, spinal um, column, okay? And the, the, it's always divided into five parts. Now, in the Bible, <coughs> in uh, Genesis, let me see, Jacob, in uh, Genesis 32... Uh, it says this, finally Jacob was left by himself. This shows how much of this science is in the scriptures. When people read about Jacob, they think, oh, that's Israel. That's, that's, oh, Israel, Israel. Because he got his name changed from Jacob to Israel. I'm going to show you how that happened. Right? He gets the sun, because Jacob, it's got to be the sun. It's talking about light, remember. Everything's talking about light. So you read the Bible, the character is light or magnetism. Just remember that, and you'll decode it. So, Jacob is down here, Israel is up here, Abram is here, Abraham is up here. The, na the sun gets a, a, a name change at, at that equilibrium point. See, this is angular momentum here. This is the wave, remember, this is the wave amplitude. This is, this is the wave length. Remember, we had the sine wave going down here, right? So, this is the amplitude, okay? Um, so... So the sun is always going to change his aspects as he goes through those quadrants. In fact, the Egyptians said, this is Horus, this is Ra, this is Set, and this is Osiris, which are just aspects of light. You see? These four quadrants, these four seasons, these four stations were given their quality of light. And this light is Horus. The newborn sun. That's Horus that Isis holds in her hands because here the sun is born. And in fact, on the 25th of March, that's when Gabriel says to Mary, you're going to conceive. Remember Gabby? Yeah, the messenger of God? He says to Mary, he says, you're going to conceive. Sure does. On the 25th of December. From the 25th of March, nine months later, 25th of December, the sun is born. That's, that's what it's talking about. And that's why we celebrate Easter. Because also, the son is resurrected here. He dies on the cross, and then he's resurrected. Um, but <clears throat> going back to Jacob, finally Jacob was left by himself. Then a man began to grapple with him until the dawn ascended. Do you remember this story? Yeah. Okay. Good. When he got to see that he had not prevailed over him, then he touched the socket of his thigh joint, and the socket of Jacob's thigh joint got out of place during the grappling with him. After that he said, let me go, for the dawn has ascended. For the dawn has ascended. To this he said, I am not going to let you go until you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? To which he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Where the dawn ascends, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Okay? For you have contended with God and with men, so that you have at last prevailed. Here the son is contending with enemies. He's, he's, he's contending with God with these angels, remember the bad angels of Saturn? And then he, this, is, this is all about, here, this is all about the sun contending. He's, tr he's struggling to bring back the lighter. Remember the plus plus over here, the spring? He's struggling to pass over. He's struggling to, to grow his rays so that he can be longer days, shorter nights. Because here is longer nights shorter days. So this is the struggle period where Jacob struggles with an angel and then he succeeds. 
Okay? Now, now it gets better. <laughs> Hang on to your seats. This gets really, really good. Um, because you have prevailed. In turn, Jacob inquired and said, Tell me, please, your name. However, he said, Why is it that you inquire for my name? With that, he blessed him there. Hence, Jacob called the name of that place Peniel. Sound familiar? Pineal? Hang on. So he called the place, remember, um, and because to quote him, I have seen God's face, I have seen God face to face, and yet my soul was delivered. And then it goes on to talk about he sees a ladder, an angel going up and down the ladder, and he was sleeping on a stone. Remember that, the, the, the stone of scone? Queen Elizabeth claims to be coronated on the stone of scone. That's Jacob's stone, where he had this dream. Right? Remember the, the Union Jack flag? And the blue and red that's on there? This is all Israelite and Freemason, Freemasonry symbolism. Okay? Uh, so, <coughs> this is the ladder, the stairway to heaven, the 33 degrees of Freemasonry. This is how you get up to heaven. Heaven's up here. The pineal gland, gland is at the top where Taurus is, where I showed you that Taurus has the Pleiades in it and the Pleiades corresponds to the pineal gland. That's the pineal that he's talking about, where Orion is and Taurus up here, the two hemispheres of the left and right brain. And he said that he saw God face to face. This is where you see. This is the third eye. These ones, these see, this just sees a very thin slither of reality. Very, very thin. This one sees the lot. You see God face to face. And where was the stone that he laid his head on? Would that be the, um, the sacrum? What does sacrum mean? Does that mean sacred? Oh, yes, it does. See this? The sacrum is five of these, five of these um, spinal bones fused together. It's a stone. It's the stone of scone. This is where Jacob lays his head and then he sees the angels climbing up the ladder and he sees God face to face and calls it the place where he saw God, Pinel. This is the brain and these are the 12 nerves of the brain, the 12 um, cranial nerves and there are their names. Okay? Optic, olfactory, facial, etc. These are the 12 disciples that Jesus sends down into the circuit of Galilee to preach to the Gentiles. Remember the, the Gentiles that you're supposed to kill, those Perizzites and Jebusites? That's your lower nature. Light has a, no, a lower nature. That's what we call evil. And that's down there. This is hell. The heart is the middle earth. And then this is the heaven, you see. You go up into the heaven. The right brain, remember that one, the intuitive? Well, there's the two hemispheres of the brain, see that? That's the corpus callosum, that's the Red Sea. To get from the children of Israel, to get to the Holy Land, must cross the corpus callosum, you must cross from the left brain into the right brain to get back to the Garden of Eden or the Holy Land. And guess where it is? Here. There it is, in the head. The head is here. So when the sun finally comes into exaltation, it's in Aries and Taurus in the head. And what has happened is we, we have a chance of passing into the Holy Land. It's in the head. This theology, this is mythology. Now I get a lot of people that attack me because I only have a mythological, astrotheological and allegorical perspective of the scriptures and no historical Jesus. Now I'm aware of many great writers that, like Yogananda, Paramhansa, that believe that Jesus actually lived. And he knows all of this, he knows all of this stuff. Rudolf Steiner. Guys of that caliber that 
were doing the same science as I'm doing, and yet they subscribe to a historical Jesus. Now, my greatest inspiration in occult wisdom is Thomas H. Burgoyne. And Thomas H. Burgoyne says that Jesus, the historical, was a merging of three characters. The Egyptian Osiris, Apollonius of Tyana, now forgive me if that spelling is wrong, and Jesus the Essene. You see, the doctrine, in the doctrine of the coming one, or in the doctrine of the, the avatar, Jesus is always coming. And as we go through these consciousness states, here is Gemini, this was the Garden of Eden 6,000 years ago, then we fell into lust in the Taurian age. And then we got inspired to be martial and we did a lot of killing In the, in the Greek days, Alexander going around conquering the world. Cyrus, Nebuchadnezzar, Sennacherib, Amenhotep. But that all happened here in Mars. And now we are here in the wealth and money of Jupiter, Zeus, Jesus. So as we go through these states of consciousness and we are being built up as we go, Certain avatars and inspired ones are given to us. None of this, the mythological and astrotheological part of the Bible or part of this sign, absolutely categorically excludes a historical Jesus. And so this is why some of these great teachers that I have, probably except for types like you know, Alvin Boyd Kuhn, who just did not subscribe at all to a, to a historical Jesus. And many of the great writers do not subscribe at all to historical Jesus. But within this science and the doctrine of the coming one, every 600 years, the earth produces someone that turns up in history that symbolizes perfectly the consciousness that has arrived. And that's how it happens. This is why we still hear talk about a Jesus. No, there was, Freemasons believed that there, were, there was a Jesus. But this is Freemasonry. But they absolutely subscribe to a historical Jesus. Because if there was Jesus the Essene, Jesus Ben Panthera, as Celsus tells us 2,000 years ago, uh, well, he would have been someone who saved himself. These men save themselves, they become avatars. You know, just a couple hundred years after Jesus, there was Akiba, the great Jewish rabbi, teacher, who ascended. Men ascend. We will ascend. But, but the earth and history does produce these holy men. And so this particular historical Jesus, if you must have a historical Jesus, was a, a good man that taught this. How do we know? Because he had 12 apostles. It was all about the Zodiac. But please never be confused with the Jesus that is in this book. This reads like a myth, looks like a myth, therefore it is a myth. And a myth is not a story, hocus pocus. A myth is the greatest of truths. Truths that the profane can never grasp. That book is full of myths. Beautiful myths written in the skies by the language of God. Astrology. It's all about astrology. And so, I have never treated this subject in my presentations because this Jesus who saved himself like Buddha did, and I'll go through, we're going to go through this circle and we're going to find out how, those, how Buddha manifested. Mercury's Buddha many thousands of years ago, and how Jesus manifested as Zeus over here. And Muhammad manifested as Venus over here. We'll get into that. But that's all it means. Muhammad is all about Venus here in the age of Pisces, the late comer. Because he, he came 600 years exactly to the day after Jesus. Because there is, there is always a 600 year period in the doctrine of the Avatar in the doctrine of the 
Saviour, the coming one. That's what Jesus means. You, I, you, in Jesus. The I and the you means the coming one. Always he's coming. There are seven heroes here. Perseus is here. And as this wheel goes around, as that wheel goes around, it's always coming. There's always someone coming. Here is Booties. Here is Leo and Regulus, the beautiful star. Here is the Cancer and the Bark of Ra. Here is Pollux, where everybody's waiting for Pollux. Here comes Orion in Taurus. Here is Cassiopeia and Perseus, the Ram. Here is Cephas, the one who has his foot on the North Pole. And he's always coming. Here is Aquarius, the Saviour. Here is the Goat, the Saviour of Israel, the Scapegoat. Here is Sagittarius, the Centaur, coming to save us. There's always a Saviour, always coming. This is the coming one. And so, as we go around in these periods, we see, we can find all the characters. This is why the, this is also why the Muslim Islamic flag has the crest of Venus on it, and it's green. But it's, it happens to be Venus in this, in this context, in Pisces. So Muhammad, they are Venetian, the Moors are Venetian. This Jesus here, who came and pretty much inherited the title of Messiah because, because he ascended the oils, what happened was Jesus the priest merged with Christ the consciousness. And this happens in the body. So that's why this particular Jesus that turns up here had the Jupiterian that was the progeny of the, the planet Jupiter. The planets are actually bodies of angels. They are archangels. And they are beings of many, many angels. And when they turn up, they produce the right consciousness that someone in history turns up and inherits. It's pretty much like if you want to, okay, if you want to have a symbol of science, you would use the face of Einstein, wouldn't you, to be the definitive face of science. If you wanted to find the definitive face of the Renaissance, you would have the face of Leonardo da Vinci, because Leonardo da Vinci was the symbol that 500 years ago that typified the Renaissance. So all you've got to do is use that face. Well, when you see faces of Jesus, <laughs> you'll notice that it's the face of Jupiter, the jovial one. You see? It's just a symbol. They've just used a good man, a prophet, that many of the great researchers understand and put in its proper place that it's just a man. It's just you. It's, we are all those messiahs that came. And I'm going to go back and show all the messiahs that have come and show how they correspond with the planets in those signs. But eventually it will be you that is that messiah. So here we've found Moses, the period of Moses, Mars, and also Abram. So Abram turned up, guys. Yeah, he turned up. And so did Moses. Abram was supposed to be here 4,000 years ago. Moses is here 1,500 years ago. Moses, when the 18th dynasty of Egypt was kicking butt, and there was the Amenhoteps and the tough Moseses. Ooh. Toth and Moses, if it isn't an Egyptian word. Well... Of course it is. It's all from Egypt. And Moses was learned in the wisdom of Egypt. The wisdom of Egypt. It's not the so-called wisdom of Egypt. It's truth. Not the truth. You see, the churchgoers are living in the land of subjective truth. That's why Jehovah's Witnesses says, Oh, I'm in the truth. They are enemies of truth by being in the truth. Because it's the lie. It's the lie that they accept 
as their version of this, which is truth. It's their corrupted version. The priests don't teach you any of this. Before that was Venus. Venus is the ruler of Taurus, and the moon exalts. These were the sinners of Moses. Remember Mount Moses climbed Mount Sinai, and but he killed the bull. But see, that's where the word sinner comes from, anyone who follows the moon religion. So that prophet, whoever it was that turned up here, and that would have been, well, Hathor, see Egypt was, Hathor was very popular here, this is Hathor, you've got Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Peter and Paul, and Muhammad. Now you can go back and you can find them all. But this is how the theology works, as above so below. This is why people cannot detach themselves from the historical Jesus. Oh, I need a historical Jesus. We don't need a historical Jesus. It's not needed at all. He was a saviour. He saved himself. Goodbye. We save ourselves. We become saviours. We become Jesuses. It's the story of us. Let's go for break. We're going to tell you a story. How would like to hear a story? The story is one, and yet it is many, many stories. And you've heard them before. You've heard them in fairy tales, when you're a little child in school, nursery rhymes. You've heard the story in the mythologies, the fairy tales, the gospels, the legends and all of those great classical books, like the Bible. And um, each culture has their stories, and it's all one story. You see, Little Red Riding Hood is the sun. And uh, as the sun sets in the western horizon, so let's take that to be the east, and that's the west over there, the ancients always placed the scales of Libra at the western sunset, where from time to time the sun sets with its red colours. And um, <clears throat> the scales of Libra begin right at the horizon and go for 30 degrees below the horizon. Just like this. These are the signs. This line here would be the uh, <coughs> This line here would be the horizon, and um, this one here, and there's the scales of Libra. So, <clears throat> when Little Red Riding Hood, the sun, sets, you see, Mama tells Little Red Riding Hood, don't you stop and talk to anybody, you go direct, because that's what the sun does. Out of all the planets in the sky, in the solar system that we can see, the seven, the sun is the only one that goes direct. The moon does too, but she waxes and wanes. Whereas the sun's always faithful and true. Jupiter retrogrades. Saturn retrogrades. But little old uh, Red Riding Hood goes direct. You see, but the wolf comes along, and the wolf happens to be Lupus, one of the deacons of Libra, the scales of justice, where the sun dies every day when it sets on the horizon in the west. The Egyptians called that dying, they called it westing. That's why they put all their uh, <coughs> tombs on the west bank of the Nile. Because that's where you die, that's where all the stars die. You see, you watch the stars in the zodiac go around every night, and uh, you'll see them at the horizon, they go faint, and then all of a sudden they disappear. That's judgment. That happens in Libra. And that's why the, the crooks, what we call here in the south the Southern Cross, that's on our flag. That's also a deacon. These are the Southern Deacons, the wolf, lupus, and the cross. There's the sun, and that's the Northern Deacon of Libra. It's always on the horizon. But you know, little red riding hood, <coughs> 
when she gets eaten by the wolf here in Libra, the, the wolf of darkness, this, is, this will be day and this will be darkness, she always comes out the other side. You see the huntsman, Orion in Taurus, the huntsman, he opens up the wolf and Little Red Riding Hood comes out again to see another day. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Snow White is the sun because the sun has a beautiful white aura and glow and the undifferentiated light of the sun is the one white light which gets differentiated into seven colours and they are the seven of everything that you see. They'd be the little red little dwarves that uh, help Snow White. Sleeping Beauty. <coughs> I wonder what Sleeping Beauty is all about. Uh, is it in this one? Sleeping Beauty happens to be um, the Earth Goddess. Sinks into her long winter sleep when pricked by the point of the spindle. In her cosmic palace, all is locked in icy repose, naught thriving, save the ivy, which defies the cold, until the kiss of the golden-haired sun god reawakens life and activity. Cinderella and Prince Charming. Cinderella's the dawn, Prince Charming is the sun. Same story, same characters, different names different cultures, but they all originated from one common origin. According to John Thackeray Bunce, in fairy tales, their origin and meaning. One common origin. And when you study these stories, and you, you study the, the, uh, the, um, the words, you will see that clearly. It only takes a little bit of research. The uh, wicked stepsisters would be the cloud, and the stepmother would be the night. What have we got over here? Nursery rhymes. Song of sixpence. Four and twenty blackbirds are the four and twenty hours, and the pie that holds them is the underlying earth. Covered with the overreaching sky. How true a touch of nature it is that when the pie is opened, that is, the day breaks, the birds begin to sing, the king is the sun, and his counting out the money is pouring out the sunshine, the golden shower of Danae. The queen is the moon, and her transparent honey, the moonlight, the maid is the rosy-fingered dawn who rises before the sun. Her master and hangs out the clouds, his clothes across the sky. The particular blackbird who so tragically ends the tale by snipping off her nose is the hour of sunrise. Tom Thumb, Jonah, Little Red Riding Hood, as I said, <clears throat> uh, John Thackeray Bunce again, Little Red Riding Hood, as it is told in our nursery tales, is the evening sun, which is always described as red or golden. The old grandmother is the earth, to whom the rays of the sun bring warmth and comfort. The wolf, which is a well-known figure for the clouds, of blackness and blackness of night is the dragon in another form. First he devours the grandmother, that is, he wraps the earth in thick clouds, which the evening sun is not strong enough to pierce through. Then with the darkness of night he swallows up the evening sun itself, and all is dark and desolate. Then, as in the German tale, the night thunder and the storm winds are represented by the, cloud snor uh, by the loud snoring of the wolf. And then the huntsman, the morning sun, comes in all its strength and majesty and chases away the night clouds 
and kills a wolf and revives old Red Mother Earth and brings little Red Riding Hood to life again. Or another explanation may be that the wolf is the dark and dreary winter that kills the earth with frost and hides the sun with fog and mist and then the spring comes. Jack and the Beanstalk. Found in the old Hindu tales in which the beans are used as the symbols of abundance or as Mimi the moon and in which the white cow is the clay and the black cow is the night. The three sisters of whom one is chosen as the bride of an enchanted monster who dwells in a beautiful palace. By the arts of her sisters she is kept away from him and he is at the point of death through his grief. Then she returns and he revives and becomes changed into a handsome prince and they live happy ever after. One feature of these legends is that beings closely united to each other, as closely, that is, as the sun and the dawn, may not look upon each other without misfortune. Sleeping Beauty. So you see, that's the story. And the story is to be found in the Gospels as well. Because there's always this shining prince, this hero that comes along and saves the day. Saves the day. Jesus is a saviour. J-E-S means the son. Same character. This story has been told in many, many uh, genres. And probably the most beautiful one of all would be in what we call the Judeo-Christian works. Absolutely magnificent. And um, <clears throat> what they are hiding, uh, what these stories are hiding is alchemical truth. ...is going down to matter, but the spirit red, the phallic of mankind, is going up back to the heavens. And it's just Jacob's ladder. You know, Jack and the beanstalk, Jack plants some seeds, climbs the beanstalk. There's a goose that lays a golden egg and a giant up in the heavens. Jacob, he's also planting seeds and looking after Laban's sheep and making sure that the cattle and the sheep of Laban are producing spotted and mottled and, and all sorts of different animals. And then he lays his head on the stone of scone, which is basically the, the sacrum. These five fused bones, that's the stone of scone. It's very big, it's triangular. Jacob lays his head on the stone of scone, sees a ladder with angels going up and down, and it's a 33-rung ladder. Jesus dies at 33, gets crucified up in Calvary, the cranium. Golgotha, the skull, because this is where you get crucified at the optic thalamus. That's the golden eggs of Jack and the Beanstalk. And that's the place that Jacob, when he, when he saw God face to face, he said, I've seen God face to face on top of the ladder. I struggled with an angel and I got my name changed to Israel. And I called that place Peneal, Pineal. It's all in the Bible. All light particles are either expressing the mother light principle or the father light principle. For example, if a particle is on the amplitude of the wave, if a particle is on the amplitude of a wave, it would be a true sphere. And as a true sphere, it would be either positive or negative. It might then appropriately be called a neutron. So a particle is called a neutron here. A particle which is spirally heading inward toward the apex of a vortex in the process of becoming a sphere might appropriately be called a proton. See this? That's a proton. That's a neutron. Because of its expressing the father light principle. Again, if it is moving spirally outward 
it could appropriately be called an electron because it would then be discharging in excess of its charge or expanding in excess of its contraction. Light rays, for example, leaving the sun are discharging the sun. They are also discharging themselves because they are expanding into greater volume. A light particle expands as it leaves the anode in an outward radial direction and contracts as it radi radially approaches the anode. The sunlight we feel on our bodies is not actual light from the sun. What actually is happening is that the sun is a reproducing the sun is reproducing its own condition on the earth by extending the reproductions out of through cold space into ever enlarging wave fields until those reproductions begin to converge again toward our center of gravity into even smaller wave fields. Gravitation is the positive electric principle which exerts its pressures centripetally toward the maximum incandescent points of compression in every wave field. It is the father principle of nature, the integrating principle of uphill flow of energy, which forever balances its downhill flow. Radiation is the negative electric principle, which exerts its pressures centrifugally toward its wave field boundary planes of magnetic light. It is the mother principle of nature, the disintegrating principle of downhill flow of energy which forever balances its uphill flow. So Walter Russell, a new concept of the universe. Nature generates matter from rings into spheres by way of north-south poles and radiates spheres back into rings by the way of their equatorial east-west poles. In this manner, matter emerges from space to form moving bodies and is swallowed up by space to disappear into the stillness of their zero source. North-south poles balance and control the prolating of spheres which nature needs for the forming of bodies and their division into pairs. They extend in opposite directions at angles of 90 degrees from wave axes to form poles of rotation for spherical body forms. They are the shafts of waves and all spheres which spin upon shafts. East-west poles balance and control the oblating of spheres which nature no longer needs for its body forms. They extend on wave axes to equators of forming spheres. They are the rims of wheels which spin upon the north-south shafts. North-south poles control the division of equilibrium into two opposite conditions which occupy opposite sides of mutual equators. North-south poles divide the one condition into two against the resistance of east-west polarity, while east-west poles unite the two conditions into one against the resistance of north-south polarity and keep balance between opposite hemispheres and hemispheroids. Matter is born at zero planes of equal potential. Polarization builds it up to maturity at 90 degrees from zero planes. Depolarization then returns it to the zero of its birth. Hallelujah, because that explains the duality of universe which comes from the one. And it also explains the Trinity and the four poles, east-west, north-south. Astrology of the Old Testament, or lost word regained, on page 16 it says, All things are governed by attraction and repulsion. All attraction and repulsion merge at one great center, the great father and mother, creator, God, the grand central sun. It is said that Moses commanded, He that understandeth Genesis, let him not reveal it. 
Genesis should be revealed that we may have a true conception of the beauty of astrology. Genesis, not the beginning, but what Isis, the mother nature, generates or produces. Isis, the ruler of waters, the menstrual of all nature, which combined with air and heat generated all things. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters, air in motion. And God said, let there be light. And there was light, heat, electricity, force, magnetism. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. We have here a distinct account of the action of the elements, that by the air, fire and water the earth was formed and all things generated. Not only is this true of all veget vegetables on the earth, but of all animals and also of man and every living thing. That the Bible used astrology is quite plain. They had the Urim, the Thummim and the Ephod. Check out those words and you will see the astrology in the Bible. You will even find accounts of relics and bones of the sainted ones performing miracles just as the claim is today by priestcraft. Of these things I have little but little to say. Science and study of natural laws and forces will eventually explain away all mystery and astrology will again reign supreme as of old. For that which has been shall be. There is nothing so perfect as the movement of the sun and his government of our solar system under the great author of all things, Aum. Omniscience, omnipresence, omnipotence, immortality. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Remember Kephra, Ra, the scarab, transforming the soul, S-O-L, Psalms 19 verse 7, the law of the Lord. The law is the tarot, the Torah. That the astronomical or astrological knowledge of the Egyptians taught this to Moses is evident as the Ram Isis or Ramesses, Isis, Essenes, and the place of its keeping named in verse 37 of this 12th chapter of Exodus. Of this 12th chapter of Exodus. Always the two towers. There's the sun, always divided into 12 pieces. The sun in the middle with his 12 disciples, his 12 posts or apostles. Basilica Santa Maria degli Angeli Martiri. Yeah, Rome. Rama, the head. Michelangelo. Mm-hmm. That's Michelangelo's, so he's divided into C22, 23 and 24, he knows what he's doing. Meridian, the sun, and all the signs of the zodiac. There it is, the seven, the seven stars. More astrology, the pillars, always. There's the ram, the bull, the twins. Crab, Leo. The Virgin, Scales of Justice, the Scorpion, and the fish tied together by two bands. Pay attention to that. Two band by the band. Next. There it is, the phallic. There's the royal arch. There's the stone that the builders rejected. All of this, it all has to do, everything has to do with astrology. This is pure astrology. In fact, temples were built in the patterns of constellations. There never has been a temple, there never will be, that has not. So it's no use churchgoers denying, oh, that's, the, that's just a, a, a round window and 12 is pretty. That's why we've done 12. Well, 11's pretty. Ah, uh, 13's great. What about 14? No, none of that. We just want Jesus and the 12 disciples in this church. Disc Iples. There's the disc and the disc Iples. Again, the towers... Boas and Jackin, the Holy Cross, the four cardinal points, 
the four angels, the four winds. There it is, the sun. And all the degrees, 360 degrees. Every day is a degree. Every day is a different angle. Every day is a different angel. Therefore, you have different angels with different names. There it is, the sun, the phallic. The holy sun. You see, you see the sun going through the pillars of Hercules, always going through those pillars. The sun is always in the middle of the pillars, travelling, travelling through the solstices and the equinoxes. There it is, the sun. There he is with the winged, the winged disc of the sun. And look at these churchgoers. Oh, that's... Uh, it's an angel. Uh, 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 it's, it's beautiful architecture. Because they're morons. They've been reduced to, to moron because they have defaulted in their own responsibility of knowing the truth. There it is. The Rose Cross. The Sun. The Holy Grail. I-E-S in Greek. Yes. Jesus, the sun. There it is again. You see the sun and the moon. The sun is the hour. Hour comes from Horus. The minute is the moon. And the seconds come from the speedy little Mercury. There it is inside. This is all, this is the, this is the, the solar system in stone. These masons, they know every little angle and how to create because the great teacher, the Demiurge, the Lord, taught them. And they, these, these guys, they're just following the orders. It, it's not good and it's not evil. It's just this is architecture. It's based on the sun and the seven orbs. That's what angels are all about. It's, there's nothing here that is not astrological. Absolutely nothing. Boas and Jacken, actually there's four pillars. One, two, three, four. And there's Jesus Christ the Son in the middle of the equinoxes and the solstice dying for our salvation. It dies in the winter, it dies when it gets crucified at Aries, Cancer and Libra at the four points of Ra. And all of this is astrological, it's all pure astrology. And as for the churchgoers like the Jehovah's Witnesses that say, oh, but we've got a kingdom hall, uh, we don't have temples and churches and cathedrals, that's pagan. Crock of shit. <laughs> the Jehovah's Witnesses go to a kingdom phallus. Hall comes from phallus. When they go to worship Jehovah in their kingdom dick, it's just the same as what these guys do. It's all about phallus. Next. There it is. The San Miniato in Tuscany, Italy. Let's have a look in this little place and see what we can find, shall we? Whoops. Oops, oh Lord, if it isn't the sun and astrology, there's Jesus Christ with the holy cross on his head and the halo of salvation, the sun. Who we got here? Whoa, Jesus coming in the clouds to save everybody, the sun. Look, and every eye shall behold me. And the risen saviour. Risen? Would that come from Ra? I think so. When you raise the Christ, you Ra, the sun. Just keep going because people can, people can pause. Oh, that was good. That was uh, the four signs of the Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio. There it is, the sun, Jesus Christ. There's the sun. He's pointing to his heart because that's also Horus. See, Leo is a fire sign. Aries is a fire sign. So you're going to have fire up here in Aries, and it's a perfect trine to the heart in astrology, perfect relationship, heart to mind. And this is what they're teaching you. Jesus is saying... Please pay attention. And there's 3.14. 3.14 is pi. That's the science they're teaching you. There it is. There's the signs of the zodiac. And here we have the ram, the bull, and the, the twins going around the other way. There it is. These are all churches. These are Christian churches, people. And these are mosaics. These are mosaics. Moses. Moses and the brazen serpent, the ecliptic, the sine wave. Everywhere you go, the 12 sons of Israel, everywhere in the world, in the universe, you will never ever find a more recognisable symbol in the universe because the universe is made by this. There you go. There's, there's Jesus in the Kabbalistic tree. Kitha, which is the same as Malkuth. 
And in here you have the pseudocephra called dart, which means gnosis, which means knowledge, which is what we are here for, to get the knowledge, to access understanding, wisdom and love. Love is God is love. God is light, kether, ether, the source. And this is a zigzagging thing like electricity because everything is vibrating and zigzagging through the heavens. Ra projects from here and makes all of this. There it is, there's the sun. The oldest religion on earth is the worship of the sun on the cross. The cross is formed by connecting two solstices with a line and the two equinoxes with a line crossing the first one at the centre of the circle where the sun is located. The sun cross is also called the sun wheel. Remember the will of God? From ancient prehistoric times, man drew this symbol in many ways in different places. There it is. Swastika, same thing. Here, as we'll see later, this is in an Indian temple. There's 24 of these eight-spoke wheels. The cross-quarter days are in there and the solstitial and the equinoctial days. And there's 24 of these massive wheels in the temple of Konark, sounds like Karnak in Egypt and Karnak in France, which we will see in a minute. There it is. The sun, the cross, crucified four times. You will always just see the cross. That's all you will see in the universe as a symbol of creation. Spirit and matter. There he is. Beautiful. The idea of representing the Son of God as the Son of God had already been done in other religions. For all the morons and all the intellectual, educated, religious types that come from seminaries that go, oh, oh, S-U-N and S-O-N, that's just a coincidence. That was never... It was absolutely interchangeable and in reference to one another. The S-U-N is the S-O-N. Period. And when it's time that we shut the mouths of the imbeciles who go around debunking this and saying, oh, paganism was mixed with Christianity, and, but the Jesus religion is the only true religion. What a crock. It's all the one thing. Oh, look at these churches. Well, Calvary, the skull where, the, where Jesus dies, up here when you, when you bring the oil back to heaven. Rising Sun Holy Church. Oh, that's interesting. Pleasant Hills Christian Church. What are they doing with all these suns? I wonder whether they know what they're doing. I, I can guarantee you that the governing bodies of these corporate churches doing business on the name of Jesus Christ, they know exactly what the sun's doing in there. Bethel. Bethel means, can you go back to that one, please? House of God. That's Taurus. L, the cerebellum. That's the house of of Taurus and yeah Bethlehem 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 is another word for Karnak in Egypt did you know that Bethlehem the house of the lamb Lahem means the lamb they, it's called the house of the, the meat yeah, the Laham. Laham. Laham means meat. yeah it also means lamb I've, I was told that by Arabic people yeah. Karnak is the house of Lahem the lamb the lamb of God when you, when you go to a cathedral, it's in the shape of a cross, and you will always find that the altar is where in a cathedral? The altar is always... You go into the cathedral, and then you, and then you go past the arms. The cathedrals are always like this, right? You always... You go into a cathedral from the feet. And then the altar is always there where Taurus is, because t altar comes from altar or altor. T-A-U, altar, and you always go up to Taurus, to the altar, and that's where it will always be here. So this is a man, and the altar of the cathedral is always here where Taurus is. New beginnings. Oh, blazing summer impact service. Interesting. The sun. Oh, well. Eastern star, because when the sun crosses the equinox, you celebrate Easter. Easter is Ashtate, also Esther. Esther has a friend called Mordecai. I wonder whether that would be Ashtate and Marduk. Hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. The rising sun. Oh, look at Mr. Popey Poo. 
He's carrying the sun with him everywhere he goes. Oh, what a good little boy. That's for all the pedophiles out there. Next. There you go. There's the pedophile club. And they've got the cross in there, haven't they? What the Catholic pedophile church does is it hides everything in plain sight. There's the phallic. It's a sundial. And then when the sun... See, the sun's up here. This is facing east, by the way. East is here. This is north. This is south. When the, when the sun goes through the equator on Easter and it get, rises up to Cancer, it sends a shadow on that, on that sundial. You see the shadow is there, but it will send a shadow onto this statue here. At the end, these are, these are colonnades. This a beautiful, big colonnade. And there's a statue here, statue here, statue here, statue here. So that as the sun goes from summer, autumn, winter, spring, summer, autumn, winter, spring, it will cast a shadow in this cross, always. And so what they're showing you is these are the solstices, the amplitude of the wave, and this is the equilibrium. This is why when the Pope comes out here, to all the pedophile supporters that are gathered around here on Easter, he is looking to the east. The sun is right here at Easter. It's crossed over into the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, the Lamb of God will be here in this section here. Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, the days of Lent, and then when the sun crosses at Easter, Ashtate, they celebrate the crossing of the Lamb of God. There it is. There's the sun, the wheel of the year. Same old religion, guys. Hasn't changed. There, there's the sun walking on water. The Roman Catholic cross, the Egyptian ankh, the pyramid, by the way, I, I want to give, um, this is a friend of mine called John Maritain, who is a occult researcher, he's very good with tarot, and a lot of these pictures come from John, thank you John, and also Jennifer Assad, who is giving me a lot of these pictures that you will see in a minute, and also Richard from Hidden Lighthouse. The Hidden Lighthouse blogspot .com.au. Richard there has got so much great information. There it is. You can see what's going on. The phallus. There's the kingdom hall. The pyramid with the detached chief cornerstone, like the dollar bill, because that's, that's what the sun does. The sun produces all of these symbols. Blessed are your eyes, for they, sh for they see. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen it. What that means is in reference to the religion that was forgotten. Because already for thousands of years, mankind has been absolutely stupid and ignorant with regards to their true natural science. And they've gone practicing idolatry, you know, like Leonardo da Vinci said, the fools that worship a man. If only I had the words to be able to censure them and help them. And do they, do they not know that all glory reverts back to the image that the causal God placed for us to adore him? This is the Son. Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. None of this rubbish worshipping some prophet. That's why Muhammad forbids even a picture of him. Because it's got nothing to do with men. If there are saviours on this planet, they are saviors because they saved themselves and they raised themselves to the higher mind and became an example for others to be saved. God's Son is the light of the world. There it is, the saviour. If that saviour didn't come up, all of this green stuff disappears. It saves nature. He dies every evening for our sins. Born again every morning. That's the sun. There's the three stages of the sun. That's the sun, that's the God most high position at midnight, at midday. 
This is the Horus position. This is the set position. Satan, red, sun setting. The sun walks on water. There you go. Your eyes do that all the time. You can see the sun walking on water as it sets. Sun dies on a cross. See the shapes it's producing? There's the sine wave. That's the ecliptic, the brazen serpent of Moses in the wilderness. That's the wilderness. That's the park, the paradise, which is a park, an ark. That's the ark. The Lamb of God. The white blossom. That's the symbol of the white blossom of the flowers in the, the period of Cerealia, the cereal festival in April in Aries. And the Japanese cel celebrate Sakura and the Romans have flora, all the flower, all the life of spring, symbolised by the lamb. That's why Jesus is the lamb of God. There it is, Leo, Regulus, sits right on the ecliptic. One of the most prominent stars that is right on the ecliptic. If you ever want to find the ecliptic, just look for Regulus. And the sun is the strongest when it reaches the line of July and August, the August one. August, AU, is the atomic symbol for gold. That's why August gives you the golden heat of summer. There's the virgin, the harvest. She has the, the seven, oh, the sheaf of grain with, with seven heads of corn on it. There's the bread that she gives at the bread. This is why when you see Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, Libra, September, the wine, and the bread is early September with Virgo. That's why the sun Christ Jesus at Libra, you see this disciple with its arms outstretched, that's Libra, the scales of Libra. Here, this disciple has his two hands out, sticking out to show that it's Gemini, Aries, Taurus, Gemini clustered in a group of three and then we have the crabby uh, cancer you see this this guy here he's pointing to Virgo he's pointing to Virgo to the right of Jesus indicating that there's no Adam's apple he has a knife in his hand the crabby cancer and there's Leo with his elbow on the table the only one that dominates the table Aries is at the head of the table with his hands at the head indicating that he is the first and the ruler. And then all of these others, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces, spring, summer, autumn, winter. They are all there to tell you about the same science of the bread and the wine. This is why when you look at the table, you see the sun is saying, look what I, look what I give you, bread and wine in your cups. This is the the evening meal that they have before the sun goes to its death down at December and Jesus the sun is saying this is the moment in between Virgo and Libra that I give you the bread and the wine. There's the balance at that point there's the one of the stars of Libra on the ecliptic and this sign was always looked forward to for balance in nature this is the sign of justice this is where the middle of the sine wave the middle of the brazen serpent of Moses and this is how it occurs that's where Libra happens all the time. Aries and Libra are here. Capricorn and Cancer are here. This is always Capricorn in the dark. This is always... And it's not good and bad either, people. Capricorn, just because he's ruled by Saturn and it's a goat and it's in midnight and winter, doesn't mean it's evil. This is the light that we can see. This is the light we can't see. And they're both crucial for existence. They're just two different kinds of light. There's the scorpion, Antares, the red star in the middle, the backstabber, Dan or Judas. Sagittarius, this is the one that shoots the sun in the heel in hell on December the 21st, the last day of Sagittarius. Would that be Ra, Surya of India? Yes, it would. Apis, the bull of April, of Taurus. 
Shamash, another name for the sun. Inti, Buddha. Ra, Mithra. Ra. It's all about Ra. There it is. Spring, summer, autumn and winter. This is the greatest story ever told. I'm going through these quickly so that people viewing on the pre uh, video can pause for themselves. There's the beard. There's the beard of the sun. That's where they get their beard in their imagery. There it is, the sun on the horizon. There's the horizon, there's the beard in the water. As above, so below, there's the horizon. There it is. This is all sun worship. These, these lines are all to do with the numbering of the days of procession and the days of the sun going from, that would be June 21st, the solstice. This would be March, this would be Libra, this would be Capricorn. It's all science, it's all, this is the bark, this is the, these are the degrees of the zodiac, these are all degrees of the zodiac, the, these are all angels, this is all solar worship, that's why you see gold, it must be gold because it's the sun. See how big this is, you see these two people here, these three people walking away from this statue, this is how much detail they paid to the sun, Ra. And the Uraeus, this is a Uraeus, we'll get to that in a minute. There's the bullet, the cartouche. There it is. It's all about the glorious sun. And, the, and here we have the two trees, Aries and Libra, you could say. It, but there's always two trees, or in other words, two pillars, or two, two opposites, two of something. Always, duality, they're telling you. But to be balanced, you see, balanced in the middle. This is in the middle path. This is a man who has walked in the middle paths, burst his pineal gland, call this the Uraeus. There you have a, a bird and a serpent. The bird, these have to do with the features in the brain, in the brain. In the brain you have these two animals. There he is. Same story, there's no difference. bird brain because you've got the amygdala in your brain and it comes, it's a bird feature that's in your brain like Ammon's horn, the hippocampus. This is all, this is the pineal gland, this is the serpent that comes forth that opens up, this is when you receive the blood of the Christ, the karast, Ra, and you become illuminated. This is the sign of illumination. This is not demon worship like the church girls tell you, man. Church girls will tell you anything to keep themselves in their own fiction and suffer the consequences. All the philosophers, right? And he's the best one. But he's talking about... Um, he's talking about uh, Troy. Of course, you see, we, there, there are scholars who really believe and insist that Troy was physically on the historical plane. It's good when you, when you have intelligent people, you know, shedding the light on, on all of these. You know, like you have... How many books have been written you know, trying to prove that Jesus was historical and et cetera, and the apostles and everything like that. You know, but then you get uh, one great book that comes along, like uh, Alvin Boyd Coons, that one, and uh, dismantles it with proofs. Absolute proofs. Well, what he's saying here about um, the Trojan War, etc., if I can find it, and I've got so many good points here. It's just beautiful the way this guy um, explains, it explains the myths, you know. Oh, there it is. Of course, it's in um, The Wandering of Ulysses, okay? This is one of the books that he translated. And he says, The Trojans are called genuine. Uh, for all the lives which subsist about bodies and irrational souls are favourable and attentive to their proper matter. On the contrary, the Greeks are rational souls coming from Greece, i.e. from the intelligible into matter. You see, so it's talking about this. The Trojan War is talking about man, and the Greeks, of course, are going to call themselves the, the rational ones, coming in and experiencing the experience of matter. Hence, the Greeks are called foreign, but vanquish the Trojans as being of a superior order. But they fight with each other, 
about the hel image of Helen, as the poet says about the image of Aeneas. Helen signifying intelligible beauty, being a certain vessel attracting to itself intellect. An efflux, therefore, of this intelligible beauty is imparted to matter through Venus, and about this efflux of beauty the Greeks fight with the Trojans, rational with irrational lives. And those indeed that oppose and vanquish matter return to the intelligible world, which is their true country. You see, so when Ulysses spends ten years returning to his true country, that's 10,000 years of incarnation it's talking about. That's talking about us. Ten is just, a, it's, it's not ten years literally. It's a symbolic number. Um, according to the... Um, as therefore the prophet in the tenth book of the Republic... Sorry. And those indeed that oppose and vanquish matter return to the intelligible world, with, which is their true country. But those who do not, as in the case with the multitude, are bound to matter. As therefore the prophet in the tenth book of the Republic, previously to the descent of souls, announces to them how they may return to their pristine felicity according to periods of a thousand and ten thousand years. Thus also Calchus predicts to the Greeks their return in ten years, the number ten being the symbol of a perfect period. And as in the lives of souls, some are elevated through philosophy, others through the amatory art, and others through the royal and warlike disciplines. So with respect to the Greeks, some act with rectitude through prudence, but others through war or love, and their return is different according to their different pursuits. And that's how they all return back to Greece. Now, the best of the Jewish wisdom that's in Bible, he was, there's no nonsense in that Bible, but he hated the Christian church. He was a hermetist. So was Thomas Paine, so was Benjamin Franklin, so was uh, Abraham, um, Washington, uh, all of those guys. So for all these churchgoers, they say, we need to bring our country, America, back to its Christian foundations. Bullshit. It was hermetic. It's hermetic from the start. It was a republic. The Christian bullshit that came after, that's um, the 1981 act when they founded DC, when these guys founded their corporation on that republic, that hermetic republic. Andrew Jackson was a hermetist. He killed the banks, remember? That's on his grave. <clears throat> yeah, they were into science. They weren't into this church-going buffoonery. <clears throat> Leonardo da Vinci said, if you find from your own experience that something is a fact and it contradicts what some authority has written down, then you must abandon the authority and base your reasoning on your own findings. What does that mean? We need to lose the opinions, leave them at the door. Don't be burdened with opinions, guys. Either it's truth or it's not truth. Yes, I know truth is on different levels. But truth is a vibration of light, and everything is light. So there is truth. Yeah, and you've got it. And it resonates with you, and you know it when you find it. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Um, <clears throat> Joseph Kennedy, father of JFK, 50 men have run America, and that's a high figure. I wonder who those 50 criminals are. I wonder whether their mothers are proud of them for all the crimes, like George Bush. Would his mother be... Yeah, she would. <laughs> yeah, the whole, family's, the whole family would be proud, like the Rothschild dynasty mother who said, if my son didn't want wars, there wouldn't be wars. What sick sick entities like these I'm quoting I'm not making any of these these are quotes from men that know you can write me off as oh you're right you don't know Santos fair enough but I'm talking from men that know that are saying this <clears throat> um, just something of encouragement the Hopi elders say, all that we do now must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration because we are the ones we have been waiting for. 
That's why you're here. And that's why you want to do something about remedies. Because we are the ones we've been waiting for. Okay, we've, we've had a crack at this. We've had a crack at, at being free. Check out the Bogomils in the Dark Ages, the Huguenots, the Lollards, the Sassinians, the Collagens, the Albigenses, the Cathars. I mean, I can go on and on and on. They murdered and killed these guys, Giordano Bruno, Campanella, Pietro Carnesecchi, um, Boeotia, uh, um, Boethius, um, Hypatia, Thomas More. I mean, how many of our brothers have been killed as martyrs because these guys... And, you know, they did things in, they did, they did things in style, guys. <laughs> you know, they don't just... Uh, get rid of you, you know what I mean? In a nice manner. They, they used to do this sort of stuff. They would torture people. The horror. You see, because what they do, this system, they keep you in fear mode. How much fear is it? People are choking on fear. There's not much love. Turn on the TV, oh, there's a war in Libya, there's a suicide bomber killed 50, babies were killed. Blood, 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 war, more war, banks are gone. Ugh. Do you turn the TV on anymore? No. Forget it. Talk Those talking heads. <coughs> How much money are they getting to talk shit to the Australian people? Absolute putrid lies, these idiots. I don't know how they go to sleep at night. Those reporters, they're not reporters. That is um, more like entertainment. <laughs> that is entertainment at its lowest vibration. Absolute animal. And the churches, we need to bust the churches. <laughs> They're not so pristine after all. Well, I've got plenty of dirt on them. And just check out my astrotheology videos and you'll know that the whole thing is a corrupted science. It was a beautiful science that we once had on this planet. And um, long time ago, let's, let's go back probably four to 5,000 years ago, the indigenous wisdom keepers of Egypt tell us that the age of Amun began, the age of darkness, the age of hiddenness. And um, <clears throat> that happened down here in good old Egypt. So, so we can go back, there were, there were seven world powers, okay? There were seven world powers. Um, and... Um, they're all basically the same entity, these seven world powers. Because what's a world power? What's an empire? It's a corporation. It's a corpse. You can't go and find... It. Where's the government, right? You, they've got buildings, but is that a government? No. They've got talking heads, they've got idiots that tell lies on the, on, on the Rothschild-controlled media all day long. Is that the government? No, they're just people who work for the government. What's the government? <laughs> you said it. It's a bit of paper, is it? I don't know. It's an invisible thing. It's, a, it's, it's the government. Right? And we're scared of it. And it's a corporation. Um, so that's what the... Rome is the current world power. Absolutely rules the world. How does it do it? Um, how does it do it? Well, it does it in, by stealth. You don't know it's ruling, and you know most of your your educated fathead disease types they don't they're preaching parrot fashion, repeating the rubbish that uh, that they teach in their universities and institutions, all run by the Vatican. They wouldn't. People who come out of those institutions they wouldn't know this. They laugh at you. Rome still ruling. Oh yeah. Well, um, check out the Senate when uh, the idiot Barack Obama is standing there and he's got his the gold trim American flag behind him, the Catholic corporate flag, and eight foot tall fasci of Rome, one on his left, one on his right, and that's Rome telling you, hey man, you know, we rule your ass. <laughs> and the Americans are, oh, we're a free country, and Barack Obama is, is a democratic, democracy's mob rule. Just check out what Thomas Jefferson had to say about it. It's mob rule. Where's the republics? You see, 
Good old Rome is just the seventh incarnation of Assyria, Greece, Babylon, Medo-Persia and Egypt. They were world powers. But wasn't Egypt the light of the world? Oh yes it was. We're talking thousands of years ago. Now Rome doesn't tell you that these, Egypt was around 60,000 years ago. You can't know that. And yet the indigenous wisdom keepers are telling you that. If you, if you come to this country and the Aborigines say, oh, we've been here for X amount, amount of years, and you say, oh, no, you haven't, uh, we're going to rewrite that 200 years or whatever. Does that gel? Does that hold water? No, it doesn't. If the indigenous wisdom keepers tell you that they go back 65,000 years in this current consciousness wave, then what's Rome telling us that the pyramids and everything were built only 4,000 years ago? Check out the work of Robert Schock, Anthony, um, John Anthony West, Graham Hancock, Robert Bouval. Check out all those guys, what they know. Stephen Miller. I'm going to Egypt in October to talk uh, um, there to do some presentations with the Commission School of Ancient Mysticism. The flyers are at the front. And, um, and they are the indigenous wisdom keepers. So, but what happened four or five thousand years ago was a lot of corruption over here, the Ammon priesthood, which has now morphed into the um, little country up here in the hills in the Alps called Switzerland, Schwesterland, the land of the sisters. Who would those sisters be, I wonder? Because Swiss, Swiss comes from... Les uh, Sœurs des Six. Uh, sir, I got that wrong, haven't I? <laughs> My French is not too good. <laughs> um, but uh, Les Sœurs, the Sisters of Isis. Those banksters that got corrupt. The priesthood of Amon-Ra. And Akhenaten tried to change all that. Akhenaten. 3,500 years ago in the 18th dynasty. But the corruption was so heavy, these guys controlled the Suez Canal. Suez Canal. Zeus. Backward. Zeus backwards. Um, they controlled <coughs> the trading, the trading here. Then there was the Phoenicians over here. And check out the work of David Icke because he's spot on the money. Um, you know how he's gone around and he's discovered the Phoenician connection? You know that flag, the, uh, the flag that the British use? What's that one called? Yeah, well, anyway, the red, they've got the Union Jack, but they've got this flag too, yeah? Right? The Knight Temp Knights Templar flag and everything like that. That comes from Phoenicia, these guys, right here. These guys here were um, very um, into commerce. You see, when you go to court today, you're doing commerce. It's all about commerce. These guys, the Phoenicians, the word phony, you know, when someone's a phony, that comes from Phoenicia, because they are phonies. <laughs> and you get phonetics, language, because these were the alphabet people, right? They gave the alphabet, the current form of alphabet, from, went to Greece and then Rome, but it comes from Phoenicia, Tyre. This city was so dangerous that the, Assyri the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Greeks hated, everybody hated these people. They were killers. They used to do tin, tin trading with England. Thousands of years ago, 3,000 years ago. There's evidence that they went to the, to the Americas, these people. They were right. They controlled the whole Mediterranean. They set up Carthage. Rome destroyed Carthage because of these bastards. Sennacherib, a king of Assyria, and Esarhaddon, his son, and Ashurbanipal, 2,700 years ago, had a go at destroying Tyre. They had a, um, a city out in, in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, and, and there was a causeway that this, and all the boats came here. This was, they controlled the seas, commerce. This is where our commerce comes from. Then Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it after Sennacherib, Esarhaddon, and Ashurbanipal had a go. Then Alexander the Great dealt with them. We're talking big, big rulers. 
that tried to get rid of these people because they were controlling everything. They controlled all of this Sicily. The Greeks controlled this part. They controlled many, many cities. Eventually they came over here to Venice. And the Phoenicians are the Venetians. I hope I've spelt that right. Venetians, Phoenicians. These are the black nobility. When Rome was sacked, most of them went here. And where did they found Venice? On the water. Just like they did. Copycats, aren't they? Same people. Uh, And these guys, then they married into all the royal bloodlines, the blue bloods in Europe with their money. It's come from this. Jack and Jill, the sun and the moon, climbed up the hill to fetch a pail of water, Aquarius. Aquarius is above when Jack and Jill are here. So they go up to fetch a pail of water. Jack falls down. That's Jack, the son. Jacob. In the Bible, Jacob is the son. Samson is the son. Moses is the son and the moon. Jesus is the son. Abraham is the son. Sarah is the moon. They all are. It's all the sun. Jack falls down and breaks his crown and Jill comes tumbling after the moon. The sun and the moon are always in their kingdom together in glory. Jesus marries Mary Magdalene and there is the virgin, his mother. That's what it is. John Thackeray Bunce. Fairy tales, their origin and meanings. They all mean the same thing. That is the relation between the sun and the earth, the succession of night and day, the winter and summer of storm and calm, of cloud and tempest, of gold and sunshine and bright blue sky. And this is the source from which we get our fairy stories. For underneath all of them, there are the same fanciful meanings, only changed and altered in the way of putting them. By the lapse of ages of time, by the circumstances of different countries, and by the fancy of those who kept the wonderful tales alive without knowing what they meant. Isn't that right? Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. There's the Seven Dwarves, the seven days of the week. Snow White is the sun. Little Red Riding Hood. The sun turns red. How many sunsets have you seen that are red? How many winters are red? They all are, because autumn is red. Little Red Riding Hood, as she turns red, she gets swallowed by the wolf, winter, night, and then she comes out alive the next day. Beauty and the Beast. Who's beauty? Well, we just read before, it's the dawn. It's always the dawn. The sun dies and he conquers and vanquishes his enemies. And at 6 a.m. in the the morning or um, break of day, there he is, you see the light just coming through. That's Prince Charming. That's Beauty and the Beast. And And as he leaves the dawn every day, he says goodbye to his loved one and returns every year to the same spot, to where she is waiting for him. Let's read that. Beauty and the Beast. We have the same idea. There are the three sisters, one of whom is chosen as the bride of an enchanted monster who dwells in a beautiful palace. By the arts of her sisters, she is kept away from him and he is at the point of death through his grief. Then she returns and he revives and becomes changed into a handsome prince and they live happily, happy ever after. One feature of these legends is that, be- that beings closely united to each other as closely, that is, as the sun and the dawn may not look upon each other without misfortune. Orpheus and Eurydike. Perseus, the slayer of Medusa. It's the sun. As the sun comes up, he slays all his enemies. How many stars can you see when the sun comes up? They all run away because he vanquishes them. He is the king and has no mercy for the stars. But when he goes down, the the stars come out and we can look up as the animals cannot. As Marcus Manilius says, man is the one that is going back to the stars because his neck looks up and contemplates the stars where he came from and sees his way back home. We are stardust and we're going back to the stars. This is a story of the sun and the dawn. Cinderella, grey and dark and dull, is all neglected when she's far away from the sun. 
obscured by the envious clouds, her sisters, and by her stepmother, the night. So she is Aurora, the dawn, and the fairy prince is the morning sun, ever pursuing her to claim her for his bride. Myths and mythmakers. Around about the same time, 1800s. Eli um, John Fisk, the Trojan War. Helen, the moon. Mary Magdalene, the moon. Selene, the moon. Anything with an Eli, Eli, Eli sound is the moon. Sleeping Beauty, the earth goddess, sinks to her long winter sleep when pricked by the point of the spindle. In her cosmic palace, all is locked in icy repose, naught thriving save the ivy which defies the cold until the kiss of the golden-haired sun god reawakens life and activity. Song of Sixpence, 24 and 20, black, uh, 20, uh, four and 20 blackbirds, the 24 hours of the day. It's all in here. And the pie that holds them is the underlying earth covered with the overreaching sky. How true a touch of nature it is that when the pie is opened, that is, when day breaks, the birds begin to sing, the king is the sun and he's counting out the money, is pouring it, and counting out his money is pouring out the sunshine. When the king, count, you know, King John counts all his money or whoever, that's pouring out his sunshine, gold, because gold is money. We have gold, silver and bronze. Silver is the moon, and that's why we call it money, M-O-N, comes from the moon. We have money, moon, silver, more predominant than gold. But that's the sun counting his, his money, the gold rays of the sun. How true the touch of nature it is that when the pie is open, that is when the day breaks, the birds begin to sing, the, the king is the sun and he's counting out his money, he's pouring out the sunshine. The golden shower of Danae, the queen is the moon. The queen's always the moon. It's always the moon. Guinevere, it's the moon. Helen of Troy, it's the moon. Abraham and Sarah, Brahma and Saraswati, that's interesting. The, the scholar who teaches this, Acharya S, who was responsible for the movie Zeitgeist, teaches that, that Brahma, what they used to do, Brahma and Saraswati, well that's, oh sorry, leave that B there, take the A off here and just put Abraham and Sarah. It's always the sun and the moon. Wherever you go, Every fairy tale, every nursery rhyme will go back to that. It may splinter off into other natural phenomena like earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis and stuff like that. But it always comes from the most striking and observable of all the natural phenomena. The day and the night, we are locked in that cycle. We are locked in these fractals, in these rhythms. We cannot escape them whilst we are here, Sabitha and under the power of the seven, which are the seven chakras. This is the science that teaches you that you are one unit of God. We're made of carbon. We've been hexed. Because when you unpack a hex, a hex a cube, you get a cross that looks like the human body. Six squares. We've been hexed with earth. We have to have a water baptism. Jesus says you need a baptism of spirit. Spirit is air and the spirit, a baptism of fire, and then you go back to the Father. Cain and Abel, Isaac and Esau, uh, uh, and Jacob. This is Jacob, this is Israel, he gets a name change. This is Abram, this is Abraham, he gets a name change at 90 degrees. The sun below and the sun above have a different name, but they're brothers. One's positive, one's negative. It's nature. Everything has resistance. It has to have. Every energy must be resisted. That's duality. Here there is oneness. Here there is duality. Sub-ether is the world in which we live, but we come from that world. And we go back to this world. You need to know this science and not be tricked by the literal story because the literal story will not save you. Salvation means waking up. We need to wake up. Scorpio, the backbiter. Judas is a backbiter. So is Scorpio, because a scorpion doesn't bite with his front claws, he bites with his back. 
And when you get bitten by a scorpion and you notice the, the, the bruise, it looks like a kiss, a human kiss, two lips. That's why Jesus is betrayed with a kiss. There's a reason why every detail is in the Bible. You must look here. And isn't it interesting that the scorpion should be there to bite the sun and betray the sun? Isn't it interesting that the goat should be there? The, the water bearer should be in the wet season. Pisces. What happens before Easter? Pisces. Lent. Lent is short for lengthen. The 40 days of Lent start here when Jesus gets baptised and then goes 40 days into the wilderness and then starts his ministry here. It's, and they eat fish. Here you eat lamb. Here you eat beef. What, as above, so below. Continuing on. The stars of the Scorpio were hidden by the sun during the season of unhealthy weather and of plagues. Remember, that's the Tropic of Cancer, June 21st, and here is December. Do you remember that? That's the solstice, yeah? Okay. So we've got the, and that's the, the equator virtually. Don't be confused. This is not north, south, east and west. This is just a graph. And as I said before, you can start Aries over here, which is more natural. It's, prop, it's proper to have Aries over here, actually. But I'm going to do it from here and you'll see why. It all makes sense when we put everything together. It's just as right to put Aries over here. But when you think of it, the Earth is going anti-clockwise around the Sun, rotating and orbiting anti-clockwise. So therefore, Aries should be over here. That should be east and that should be west. But it's not what I'm doing. Okay, and so there, and, and there's a Tropic of Cancer, there's a Tropic of Capricorn. Good. The elements, we go back. Fire, Earth, air, water. Fire, Earth, air, water. Fire, Earth, air, water. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. Cardinal. Okay? Now, remembering, March is over here. We've just crossed that. September's over here, uh, 21st. Well, I'm, I'm putting the 21st to keep it simple, but that should be the 23rd. doesn't matter. <laughs> 12 midday, sunset. Right? So you've got sunrise, 12, sunset, midnight. Spring, summer, the fall, autumn, and winter. Okay? Also, I told you, that the body goes in through there. Aries at the head, fire, cardinal fire, because the fire is up, the water is down. Water and earth are down, they're feminine. These are masculine. Spirit is masculine. That's why we call God male. It's not because God is all male. God is male and female, especially when you're talking about this God, the Demiurge, the Cosmocrators. This is not this is, this is the Elohim, this is Jehovah, this is Jupiter, this is God, God, this is the Olympians, the 12 Olympians, uh, the 7 Olympians, who destroy the Titans, right? Holy, the holy, the holy Olympians, the Elohim, wherever you see Ol, El or Il, And even in, 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 in Italian and Spanish, the article, el, in Spanish, anything masculine is el, because el is masculine. The boys, the big boys on the block, they are the two L's. And they are the two cr, cr. Remember? It's very important to remember this, because it all fits together in a minute. They are the two twins. In the Bible, if you know what you're looking for, you'll find that Jesus was a twin. That's Thomas, Thomas Didymus. 21st of December is St. Thomas Day because Jesus rules up here, the sun. And by the way, how do I know for sure that Jesus is the sun? You seen that? What are those letters? Yeah, that H, any Greeks in the house? <laughs> I've already asked that. That is E. 
and it's pronounced that H. It's not an H. This is not Latin. This is Greek. And that is I, E. It's pronounced ita. It's the Greek word for E. S. Yes. It spells yes. Now have a look at that. That's what you just saw. Now always in this uh, language of the sun, you will see that picture with the, with the H-E-S in it. Okay. Now I just said to you that it was yes. Who knows who's seen that word before? Yes, Krishna. That's exactly the name for Krishna. Yes. See that we have had that has destroyed this. Oh, they've had their, they've got their caste system, which is also being manipulated. The true, true caste system which exists in the universe. It's still a caste system. There's no doubt about that. But it's not for the Brahmins to, to trample on the Sudras because they're the lower caste. It's for them to teach them. <laughs> There we go, the corona, the crown, same thing. The crown of thorns. The sun has it, Jesus has it. <laughs> it's just art. And I, the vegetarian great, great ones of old, this is just an encouragement for us to, um, you know, progress in our habits of eating because eating more and more solid things like animals can only produce acid. And, and, um, f um, animal flesh can only produce acid in the body. It cannot produce any alkalinity. It is contrary to human nature. It's poisonous, toxic, and acidic. And you will not... Uh, you know, I mean, I'm sorry for all the meat eaters, but um, you know, it, that's one step that has to be taken. The first step is to get off meat and stop killing animals and um, the torture of creatures who have their own free will. They have a fully developed nervous system blood in their veins, and if you ask them, if you can speak their language, would you like to die and end up in my tummy as putrid, um, stay in my tummy for seven days, which the body should only eliminate all foods after 24 hours, because after that it's pure toxic. All meats stay in there for seven days, putrefy, never digest, and you can't get any iron or protein out of it anyway, because the isotope of iron is 47 and you can make buildings with it, but the one that humans need is 46, and you won't find it in meat, period. So it's all lies. We're at the end of the presentation, folks. Here is Christ Jesus. Here is the prodigal son. Here is Ulysses. Here is every hero that has tied himself to the mast, plugged his ears with wax, and said, whatever commerce and bullshit that's going on in the world, I'm going to return to Penelope. Penelope is the high heaven in the head. And when we return to the higher mind, we are restored back to our kingdom. He was wandering around for 10 years. 10 years is just a, <coughs> a symbolical number of the cycle of necessity that we are on. We are all on this cycle. We are all transmigrating. Our souls are returning to unconditioned light. And hence, the sirens will be there to tempt us. Here are the priests and the, and the pedophiles and the monarchists and the people who make money, and all the idiots outside of you trying to tell you, like all the enemies of Pinocchio. Pinocchio wanted to be not a marionette, he wanted to be a real boy. But everywhere he went, there was someone to deceive him, and he followed. And then he ended up being caught, swallowed by a whale, just like Jonah, just like all the heroes, and then when he was vomited out of the whale, out of the vomit of this earth, then he says, I'm going back. Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing stopped you, listeners, and nothing shall stop us on our path. So thank you for your lovely attention. I knew I'd get a warm welcome in, um, in Holland. I knew that. We have about 15 minutes for some questions, of course. We have some questions. You go down to hell and Tommy, 21st of December, when the sun is killed, you go down to hell and Tommy, St. Thomas Day. Thomas is Tammuz. Tammuz. Tammuz is the one that originates the cross. Right on cue.
And he's also Osiris, Saturn. It's the sun. Tamworth Thomas is the sun, Jesus, in his other capacity. Here he is as mm. Jesus. Here he is as Thomas, as the twin. They're twin brothers. Because the sun is in the middle of the solar sphere, hot, yeah. and Saturn, the lord of the rings, yeah. because he has... <coughs> he sits on the rings. Yeah. When we come into Kronos, into time, we, we will suffer the consequences of birth, growth and decay. Yeah. But up here, we're still immortal. Yeah. And our soul, this is, this is what makes our soul, it's a compound of these energies. Yeah chakras. So when we come into the kingdom of Satan, he's got the rings, and he is the lord of the rings, one ring to rule them all. So that's what it means to be deceived by Satan, to be in the Maya, because we're in the world. Of time. There's no such thing as time. Well, there isn't, is there? Especially well, in the one, but in the two there is. Yeah. In the two, the divided, what Russell calls... <coughs> um, well, how he describes it is that the source, ether, is timeless, of course, but to, in order to create these effects, he has to split and divide the balance of his electric force. Mm. And once you do that, then it sets in motion electromagnetism. Mm. And that's all there is. When you hear these scientists rambling on about their quantum physics and everything like that, I, I would point you to thunderbolts.org and see what those scientists, there's a bunch of Australian scientists, Thomas Thornhill and uh, Don, um, from, oh, there's a couple of guys in America, they work together and, and their site is about the electric universe. And they are debunking all these ridiculous things that scientists are trying to, still, because they're controlled by the corporations, yeah. they're still telling poo poops, yeah. they're telling lies. Yeah. It's an electric universe, it's simple, it's so simple. It's, it's just electricity and magnetism. Mm. You know? and they, but but they, they focus much on Newtonian gravity and everything. Gravity yeah. is just an effect. Mm. Mm. You know? yeah. There's yeah. the Christ. Why is the heart sticking out? Because that's where Christ is. It's the heart chakra. They're telling you. There's a reason for us to think. The solar consciousness, mm. the sun, is in our heart. And once we open that door, he will come in and have an evening meal with us. This is a beautiful picture. It's a mantra. It's, it's a um, mantra? It's, a, it's, a, um, it's an image. Mandala. Yeah, mandala. Thank you. Mandala, mandala. Yes. No, mandala. That's the word mantra. Um, it's an image, isn't it? That's why the monotheist, you know, the images of Egypt and the idols, because you can do real magic with images. Because images speak volumes, pictures paint a thousand words. And the cross is a beautiful symbol. It tells you about the equinoxes, the summer solstice and the winter solstice. The yin and yang. A little bit of male in, in feminine, a little bit of feminine in male. And here it is, the yin and the yang. Mm. The figure eight. The figure eight comes from here. Mm. In fact, in here, this guy proves that one is here, one is, is here. That line is sitting on the equator. That's one. Aries is one. One. Two starts from the eye of the bull and goes around and sits on the equator. Three is the two twins and the third sign. Four is also here, comes from four, like this. There's the four, mm. the fourth sign, or, or here. Can you see the fourth sign there? Yeah. There it is. Five is in there. Six is the sun sitting on the equator with its tail up, as, as opposed to uh, nine would be below it with its tail going down. Mm. Eight is the sun above and the sun below, like the Korean flag shows. Mm. So you've got one to nine, conception to birth. The alphabet, A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, matter, water, mare, mare, 
in Latin is one ocean, more than one, plural, Maria. Jesus is born of Mary. The yes comes up out of the mare. E is spirit. Spirit, matter, M. It's the middle letter of the alphabet. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to learn more about that, that's the genius you need to read up. The esoteric structure of the alphabet. That's where I got this. Spirit and matter. Uh, Alvin Boyd Kuhn. Why do you remember all this? Because I love it. I love this <laughs> okay. subject. And that's when you love something. Yep. Your passion. What was it called? The esoteric. Yes. Esoteric what? Mm -hmm. Structure of the alphabet. Structure of the alphabet. Mm -hmm. And bubble has two Bs, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, okay. These are the 22 in Kabbalah. <coughs> You have the ten sephiroth of the Kabbalistic tree, mm -hmm. and you have the connecting paths. Oops, I've done a mistake there. See, there's one level, two levels, three levels, four, five, six, seven. They correspond to the chakras. That's the crown chakra. They call it Kitha. Ether. Okay, that's what it is. Ether. This is feminine, Bana, this is Kokma, this is understanding, this is wisdom. In here is the eleventh sephiroth, knowledge. Knowledge gives you understanding, feminine, and wisdom, masculine, and brings you back to the Kita. Mm -hmm. But these connecting, all these connecting ones, you've seen this before, haven't you? Kabbalistic tree, there's 22. 22. There's 22 paths, and the ten sephiroth make 32. And that is the 12 signs of the zodiac, and the ten planets, including the Earth, Neptune and Uranus. It's the 22 cards of the tarot. Yes. The internal intestines serving the body, digesting the food. Hence, Virgo is a sign of service, etc., etc. Let's continue. Here are, here are the ten concentric rings as we descend from mind, from universal <coughs> mind, Knowing to universal mind thinking. We are now thinkers. And we have seven conditions. Seven vices which we need to turn to seven virtues as we transmute lead into gold. And as we ascend the ladder of Jacob and return to unconditioned consciousness. These seven planets, these seven chakras are nothing but conditions. Our consciousness which was unconditioned has been conditioned. And we need to sublimate those energies, change them, change the polarity from good, evil to good. So we uh, mustn't judge anymore, just observe? Judge lest you be judged. Just watch. Yeah. 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 We fall into that trap because it's part of thinking mm -hmm. over here. We all fall into this trap. Here is the beautiful Ennead of Virgil, the greatest document ever to come out of good old Rome before all of this shit that Rome has produced, this pimpocracy. Here is the way that men and women used to think. It, it, this is from book six of the Ennead 730. In the beginning spirit fed all things from within. The sky and the earth, the level waters, the shining globe of the moon, and the titan star, the sun. It was mind that set all this matter in motion, infused through all the limbs. It mingled with that great body, and from the union there sprang the families of men and of animals, the living things of the air, and the strange creatures born beneath the marble surface of the earth, of the sea. The living force within them is of fire, and its seeds have their source in heaven, Remember, Walter Russell said, the seeds of all things are in heaven, in our Father who art in heaven. Give us our daily bread. The bread is the bread of the manna, which comes from the cerebral. 
Um, anyway, you can read this yourself, okay, in time. Here are the ten concentric rings, the ten rings of the, of the Kabbalistic tree. And here we see Jesus Christ. Here we, have, here we see Jesus Christ hiding behind the ten rings. These are the ten rings because they're based on seven levels. This is the beast in Revelation that says has seven heads and ten horns of Revelation. It's in your body. But is it uh, something to do with the ego? The, the... Yes, there are two egos. There's the ego of the cerebellum, which is the ego of the person. That's why Abraham comes from the land of Ur, from the gold in the head. I will be exposing today how this final period of history that we've been living in, we're coming, approaching the age of Aquarius, ruled by Saturn, by the way. Interesting. But also remember, it's ruled by Uranus. And Uranus is the daddy of Saturn. Beyond the spheres of Saturn is Uranus. Uranus means heaven. Heaven is heaved up. This is heaved up. This is the heaven. The heaven is reached here, the ram, the cerebran, when, when one is able to activate the seven chakras. And, and turning the seven vices that these chakras represent, turning those into virtues. And in the process of ascending that beautiful energy up the spine, one is able to reach the high heavens. You see, when Jesus dies at the age of 33 bones of the spinal column, at the very, very top, this, this is talking about, see, Jesus is born, but Christ is raised, you see. So this is why you hear about Jesus' ministry, ministry lasting for 33 years, and then he is crucified when the oil is, has reached the top of the medulla oblongata, and then Finally, it returns into the third ventricle and activates the pineal gland. All of the dormant brain cells in the brain are reactivated. This is why he, up heaven, Uranus, the father of Saturn, who is ruling the age of Aquarius. Uranus and Saturn together. And we are here. And we have been in this, ruled by Jupiter, which is capitalistic wealth and greed and money. Because Jupiter has a consort, Juno. And Juno is where money, Juno Moneta, was pressed in Rome. And this is the greed of Pisces and the capitalism. And this is the, the rule of money. Here there is no money. Here there is a mental and spiritual exchange of energy, the proper currency. This is why it's so important to know this science. It's so imperative because we need to understand where we are going. This is called, there's, there's a thousand year rule of Uranus here. Here is the thousand years that the Bible is talking about. There will be a thousand years of peace. Because Uranus gets to rule the first portion of his co-rulership with Saturn. And this fulfills in the Bible what it talks about when Jesus says, when I come into my Father's kingdom and I will sit at his right hand, that's basically, essentially, that is Saturn saying that he will sit at the right hand of Uranus for a thousand years. And then, after the thousand years, Saturn will return. 
as the ruler and there will be deception, a period of deception. To understand that about this rulership of Uranus and Saturn, uh, Stowe's Bible Astrology, the Bible founded on astrology. And in here he talks about this, this co-rulership. And it's biblical. We're going to go into that today to uncover that. So you see, we have two very powerful planets that have such an impact on today's world. The reason why Saturn is prominent and not so much Jupiter, Jupiter is the main ruler of capitalism and the last Piscean age. Jupiter is basically 90% ruler. Jupiter has, has more influence than Saturn, but the Saturnian church, which harvests Saturnian energy, these are your bar, for instance. You'll find those in the as magistrates, and they call themselves magistrates, and, uh, and they are a fraternity that are registered in London, the British accredited registry. But when you see the word Bar, backwards, it's rab, rabbi, because it's Talmudic law that they are imposing through their church of Saturn. This is why the magistrates wear black. Now, these guys are in your churches. This is the Latin church. Remember Virgil in the Ennead said, for we Latins are Saturn's people. And Virgil wasn't the only one. Many Roman philosophers made that statement that, that Latin is all about Saturn. So you've got Saturn, Latin, Atom. And this church, which is the bar, is working with the gluttonous church of Jupiter. See, the Saturnian greedy bar, these so-called rabbis that give us uh, Talmudic law, and these ones that give us maritime law, the Jupiterians, from Rome, canon law, etc., admiralty law. These, this is the church of gluttony and the church of Greek. And this is a coven of witches, folks. These, these two churches are a coven of witches that uh, have suppressed this beautiful knowledge. You see, the churches that go around professing to be Christian, to, to, to be based on this science, are in fact the, the force of these two planets gone haywire, basically. That's what it means. They are harvesting this energy. And uh, this is why we have, had, we have been dominated by money and greed in the age of Jupiter. But relief is coming. Because Uranus in Aquarius will rule together for 2,000 years. Ra. Ram. Ram is Royal Arch Masonry. This is the Royal Arch, the Bark of Ra. It is also right ascension of Meridian. And in here, there is so much wisdom and science. We can use our body to ascend. Inside, we ascend. If you're looking outside for ascension, waiting for a saviour to come vicariously to save you, this is not going to happen. It never has. It never will. We do the good work. <coughs> Alpha, Omega. Omega is the last letter of the alphabet. Just like the Tav, the Tav and the Omega. See, this is Omega and the cross of the Tav. In Greek, the last letter of the alphabet. In Hebrew, the last letter of the alphabet. It's where the sun gets crucified, in Libra. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why is it so holy in Egypt? It's holy. Of course, it's all holy. This is the holy science. 
This is all holy. <laughs> I mean, why is it in Egypt? Uh, why? Uh, yes, in Egypt is it so holy? Because this is called the Ankh. Ankh. Bank. Oh, who cleaned my board? Thank you, Johan. <laughs> He's like an angel. He's my angel brother. He's Scorpio. I have a brother, Scorpio, too. He looks just like me because I'm Aries. So Mars and Mars, the two rulers of planet, we both <laughs> Marshall, you see. But I'm more aggressive than him, and he's more soft. <laughs> he does this, this stuff. <laughs> Ankh is angle. We have ankle. Yeah, angle. This this is an angle moving. Yeah, ankle, but. But ank is anklish. English. Anglish. You see, they they always had the ankle in their hand because they are carpenters, builders, building gospels, goat spells, tragedies. Everything is a tragedy, a tragedy, a gospel. Our lives are a gospel. We follow the ecliptic, we follow the sun. The Bible says God gave us Jesus as a model so we shall follow in his footsteps. And so that's showing that this is a sacred person. He, is, he knows about angles. Do we know our angles? In the Bible, in Job 40, 38, 32, it says, God is saying to Job, he says, Do you know how to tell forth the Maseroth? Maseroth means zodiac. Oh, interesting. Every word in the Bible is translated from Hebrew to English, but Maseroth, they leave it Hebrew. <laughs> yeah, just so the sleeping church goes, go, oh, Maseroth is a God word. It's not the Zodiac. That's from the devil. Yes, it's the Zodiac. Do you know how to tell the Zodiac? Do you know the signs when they're coming? Do you know how to tell them? If not, you're an idiot. That's God. Literal. Literary. God, not literal God. You see, they give us. <coughs> in, in, your, in your presentation, you also said "ank" of a bank. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yes. They got it from there. Yeah. Exactly. The "ank" is in many, many words. Yeah. It's. <coughs> Thank you. Thoth, thought, always a thought. When you thank someone, it's from thinking and from heart, from Thoth, the messenger. So you're thanking someone. There's many words. Uncle comes from angle. English, the word angel, that's angel. They're telling you that we know the angels. We know the angels. This is the holy religion. Now we have forgotten it. Now we go to church and we say, oh, it's from the devil. We go to school, to university, and it's a pseudoscience. It's a pseudoscience. Oh, we haven't tested it in the laboratory. In the meantime, <laughs> astrology is telling forth everything. It's the word of God. And the Bible says, for lack of the knowledge of my word, for not knowing me, my people will perish. People are perishing for not knowing their angles. They've forgotten their science. The science of light. <clears throat> these people remembered their science. See, these people, they ascended the Christ within. The Christ came here and went to the ram, Ares, Abraham, the father. And see, they carry the, the eagle's feathers. These feathers do not touch the ground. If they touch the ground, it will bring dishonor to the spirit. They must always wear this on their head. And then when the Christians came, they killed these ones by the hundreds. <laughs> Anyone they saw, they killed them because these represent matriarchy. This is all matriarchal. All of it. Patriarchal religion comes from... Patriarchy basically amounts to psychopathy, pimpery, and pedophilia. <laughs> That's all you'll find in Rome. Or in any of these buffoon churches. Today we have some um, some Syrians here. How do you say father in Syria? Or uh. Middle East? How do you say? I know. I know. In 
Baba. Baba of Bouye. Bouye. Anyone from Iraq? Anyway, in Babylon, <coughs> Papa is Baba. <coughs> Babylon. Okay, let me do this correctly. Baba. In Italian, to say Padre, you say Papa. Papa. Everything patriarchal that is top, top down rule. You see, there's, you know, here and the top is the rulers. They are pimps. You know what a pimp is? Yes. He has all the prostitutes working for him. He does nothing. No sweat, no services. He just gets the pimps, he gets the prostitutes, they make $100, he puts $90 in his pocket, and she suffers. And these are the rulers of this world, are pimps. We live in a pimpocracy. Not democracy, not plutocracy, <laughs> not oligarchy. None of that gets up. Pimpocracy. And they use agents in their papacy. You see? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the Pope. Pope means Baba, Father, Papa. And it's Babylon the Great. You see? Egypt. Mazra Yaum Madunia. What does this mean? Any Arabic-speaking people? In Egypt they say, Mazra Yaum Madunia. Egypt is the mother of the world. Babylon is the father of the world. When Babylon was destroyed, they went to Pergamon in Turkey. From Pergamon they were destroyed, they went straight to Rome. The papacy is Babylonia, but Babylonia Mark II, because original Babylon was pure. Just like original Egypt, original Greece, original Rome, they were all pure. Everything was pure. And then it was corrupted when we descended into the gold, into the dark ages. Sometimes R, like that, backwards. Alright, this is what we're going to be looking for. Without further ado. Now you will find, folks, that... Uh, the ancients knew exactly what they were doing with everything they did. They placed everything in the right place. Uh, if I do this, I have the symbol for the sun. Okay? If I put the equator back there, and I put the cardinal point of the solstices there, I have the symbol for the earth. If I do this, I have the, the favourite of the Egyptian animals, the scarab. Please notice the back of the scarab and the T on the back of the scarab. And notice how it resembles the cranium. And notice sometimes that the, the scarab will have the Aries, the sign of Aries, stylized sign of Aries on the back, or the T across. And you'll notice that the sun is always at the top. And this dung beetle, the scarab, <coughs> rolls the dung up the hill and then lets it fall, fall down again so that it picks up um, matter and grows. And this way it was noticed that the scarab beetle was most like the sun, the animal that depicted the sun, going up, rolling up a hill and then rolling down the hill like Jack and Jill. Jack goes up Jack goes down. And that's what the scarab is doing, you see. That's the equator, and that's the solstice where it begins with its dung ball, and then it brings it up and it becomes the sun, you see. Held high up in its, in its hands, it's holding the sun up to show that it's bringing it to the Tropic of Cancer. And you see, this is why 
when the sun when the sun reaches the heights of cancer when it reaches the heights of cancer there is the crab which is really the scarab and this is why the Egyptians they really loved their um, their scarabs ancient Egypt by Lorna Oaks and uh, Lucia Gall Gallen it's a great book when this first came out in 2002 I got it because <laughs> once you look at the pictures in here you just want to have this book there's a picture of the veneration that they had for the scarab because they knew their science and they knew this the science of the scarab the animal that most depicts the sun climbing and waning reaching the top of the mountain and then falling and so you see they um, they had the scarab everywhere in Egypt well decorated here's the the cat cutting off the head of the serpent that's the day cutting off the night these are the symbols that they used for this you see this is the this will be the, the cat will be here and the serpent starts here in Libra the dragon this is the dragon and the serpent in Scorpio so this is the darkness begins here and then the cat is always chopping off the head that's what the scarabs doing it's doing the same thing and so so the Sun will be in this sign for 30 30 degrees in the sign of the crab your eyes when you meditate because there are treasures in that kind of light called darkness Ra is always any one of the letters Ra, Re, Ra, Ri, Ru. Radiate, vibrate, radius, Ravi, Rabbi, Regent, Regal, Reiki, Japanese Reiki, hmm. energy, radiance for healing. What about Re? Do, Re, me Christ Krishna Rishi ruler Horus Cerebrum Jerusalem Zoroaster Ooh. Zoro Astor is that Ra and the star? Scarabs. There it is. That's, and there's the skull. Looks exactly the same. There it is with the sign of Aries on its back. The tree of Aries. Tree of Aries. And the equator and the solstice. And the sun at the Tropic of Cancer. Because this little animal here Ra, scarab. Scarabs were popular amulets in ancient Egypt. According to ancient Egyptian myths, the sun, Ra, rolls across the sky each day and transforms bodies and souls. Modelled upon the Scarabaidae family, dung beetle, which rolls dung into a ball for the purposes of eating and laying eggs that are later transformed into lava, the scarab was seen as an earthly symbol of this earthly cycle. This came to be iconographic and ideological symbols that were incorporated into ancient Egypt society. The scarab in Egyptian language is Kephra and is used in many pharaonic names. For example, Tuthmoses III, his name was M.N. Kepharae. Kepharae. Tuthmoses the third, he built, he was involved in building the great temple of Karnak. Hmm. Its meaning needs to be presented as the word transform or transformation. Radiance. 
Men Kefare becomes strong transforming Ra. Strong transforming Ra. The scarab. And some renderings in common English, the transforming strength of Ra, or Ra's steadfastness of transformations. Horus, the true name of Horus, does anyone know that? And it means Ra of the two horizons. What's the... Uh, Jesus is the, the Lamb of God who has a bride. I wonder who that would be. Is it a U? That's a double V. It's not a double U. It's a double V. That's why it looks like a double V. In Italian, that's doppia V. Double V. Double U is a misnomer, really. Eve, the U, and the Ram. Adam is the Ram. Means red. That's the phallic of Adam, Mars. Mars is red. Gad. This is Gad. Gad is God. Over here, you have harvest moon. When you have a full moon in Virgo, just before this equinox, it's a harvest moon. This one is a hunting moon. Now, I did this in part one of syncretism, but I want to read this to you because I want to read this because it, it, it shows you how important this science is. The harvest moon is also known as the wine moon or the corn moon. Interesting. Wine happens here in September and you reap the corn of Virgo. The hunter's moon or blood moon or sanguine moon Many moons ago, Native Americans named this bright moon for obvious reasons. The leaves are falling from the trees, the deer are fattened, and it's time to begin storing up meat for the long winter ahead, because the fields were traditionally reaped in late September or early, or early October. Hunters could easily see fox and other animals that came out to glean from the fallen grains. Probably because of the threat of winter looming close, the hunter's moon is generally accorded with special honour, historically serving as an important feast day in both Western European and among many Native American tribes. Cain brought his harvest to God. Abel was a herdsman. Cain and Abel. Esau brought his harvest to God. Uh, sorry, uh, Esau was the hunter. Jacob was the man of the house and the harvest, you see, and he had smooth skin because smoothness comes from the harvest period ending at Libra, the scales. That's why the Bible says he has smooth skin and Esau had hairy skin like an animal, you see, for the hunting. Because you eat here and you harvest, and when you've got no food, well, you go killing animals for food, and you hunt in the winter. In the Book of the Heavenly Cow, the sky got goddess, Nut, or otherwise Nut, or Nuit, which is like La Nuit in, in French, is night, yeah? Supported by the eight He gods. Have you ever wondered why in Hermopolis they had the Ogdode? I think that's how you spell it. And then you've got the, in Memphis you have the Ennead. So this is eight and this is nine gods. Ever wondered why that is so? There, there's, there's always a pantheon of eight gods or, or nine in Egypt. This is because of mitosis. The division of the cells. When we start off as one cell and then it divides into two and then it does four and then it does eight. And those eight cells are in the middle of your body and they never change. 
every other one of the trillions of cells in your bodies are replaced every 120 days. These eight, which form the, the star tetrahedron, it's a star of, of this. It's not on here, but it's, it's two of those. You have, this, you have this star tetrahedron in the middle of your body, and those eight cells never perish. They're yours. That's you. That's the eight gods. The Book of the Heavenly Cow, or the Book of the Cow of Heaven, is an ancient Egyptian text thought to have originated during the Amarna period and in part describes the reasons for the imperfect state of the world in terms of humankind's rebellion against the supreme sun god Ra. Divine punishment was inflicted through the goddess Hathor. Hmm. Ra and Hathor. With the survivors suffering through separation from Ra, because if you go down to Hathor and you, you stay in the cerebellum, you'll be separated from Ra, who now resided in the sky on the back of Nut, the heavenly cow. With this fall, suffering and death came into the world, along with a fracture in the original unity of creation. The word ram and soul sounded the same in Egyptian, because the soul comes from the third ventricle, the ram. So ram deities at times were at times regarded as appearances of other gods. The ancient Egyptians believed that the human soul was made up of five parts, Ren, Ba, Ka, Sheut, and Ib. So you see what the book of the heavenly cow says? We fell from Ra's grace into Hathor's embrace, and we have been suffering ever since. This is why the lower-minded herd out there are suffering. They're all suffering because they have not reached the higher mind and everyone has access to it. It's just that we need will and intent. Did we do on camera uh, Beth Amen, Karnak, or was that off camera? Okay. Karnak in Arabic is called Beth Amen or Beth Laham. Laham is the lamb. Yeah, the house of meat, exactly. Spot on, the house of meat or, or lamb. I've been told that by Arabic people. Arabic? Wow. Scarab? And Rab is God in Arabic. Rab. Rab is God in Arabic. I did that. He kills Medusa, yeah? What's that all about? Well, it's about Perseus is the deacon of Aries. There are three deacons in every sign, 36 deacons. So it's 48 constellations altogether. Perseus is here with Cassiopeia and Cetus. Perseus is at the top of the head, right here, and he chops off the medulla oblongata. This is the lower mind takes care of the involuntary functions and everything to do with the flesh. You see? Perseus is the light bringer who destroys the lower nature. See the two wings on his head and the sword? This is our life. This is, Perseus is you when you reach the illumination and you deal with the lower mind and get rid of that lower beast, Medusa. I want to introduce you to Jesus Christ. Whoops. Did I say that's Jesus Christ? I did. Where did I get that from? From this guy. And this guy got it from Cyril of Alexandria, Saint Ambrose of Milan. Check out these names. These are old. These are thousands of years old. Saint Epiphanius, Horapollo, Saint Augustine of Hippo, the, the number one church father? What did he say about Jesus Christ and the scarab? Well, let's have a read, shall we? Blessed be the Saviour who was a black beetle or a cockchafer or a maybug or a scarabus. Ra, scarab. Athanasius Curtius, 
He was a Jesuit 500 years ago, but a very, very bright and sharp mind. And he says, he assures us that by the Maybug was signified the only begotten Son of God. Because Ra is self-begotten, remember? Yeah. Saint Augustus, he was my good Scarabus. He was the only begotten because he created himself and put on a species of mortals, but because he rolled himself in human excrement. That's what the dung does, dung beetle does. And that's in the first pages of this book. Uh, here I... Isaiah 43, 26. Sweet cane. It talks about the sweet cane, the sweet cannabis. Check these scriptures out, guys. There's a lot to learn about these holy books. Cannabis is the tree of life. That's where we get a lot of cane, ca cane and can words. Vatican, cannibal, can do. <laughs> yeah, it's cannabis. It's all about cannabis. Cannibal is cannabis and bale. It's a holy word. It's a bit like festival. Al. Carnival. The meat of Al. The feast of Al. See, when you have a festival or a carnival, it's a good time, right? Because it's a feast and it's the meat of Al. Allah. God. Jeremiah 6.20 the good cane, <laughs> the good cannabis. Good on your Bible, you rock. <laughs> Ezekiel twenty-seven nineteen, talking about the articles of cassia and cane. So check out that article. I was in Vietnam five years ago, and uh, where I was staying in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, went down to a cafe, and there was this picture. There was always, I saw this, this painting, I fell in love with it, with the colours. I just loved it. And back then I didn't know what I know now. But uh, I was noticing a while ago, looking at this, I noticed this sine wave going through the woman. I noticed this line going through here. I noticed this gold sun head, like a halo. And I noticed that everything corresponded with the sine wave. You see the sine wave going through the kidneys here. This marker here is going through the kidneys. Now this not might be this might not be deliberate. Deliberate. I'm not suggesting that it is. Uh, but I'm just showing how the sine wave and nature and vibration and ra is subconsciously there. No matter no matter whether this artist had this intention or not, it is there. And you see, the, you see the fish feet, there's no feet, so that's indicating fish feet, Pisces. You see the top of the head intersects with the ecliptic and the equator at Aries, and there is the sun, let there be light. Taurus, Gemini perfectly just before the crest of the wave, Cancer in the breast, here. Leo in the heart, crossover in the, in the kidneys. And then you have the rest, Capricorn in the knees. There's Capricorn in the knees. There's a line going straight the way through. And you can see little features that seem to indicate that subconsciously this science is coming through. I see. Yeah, notice the head of the man in Aries. There's Aries. Gem Taurus is the pointing to here. Gemini is pointing to the arms. When you put the man there, and the man in the sky is Adam, Adam Kadmon in Jewish Kabbalah. Adam Kadmon is this man here, Aries, the arms, the chest, the heart, the, the belly, Virgo is the belly. That's why you got any Virgos here, you probably notice they have a little, nice little pot belly. My father's a Virgo and he's got his pot belly, he's always had this belly, we'd always laugh at him. Well, it turns out, well, he's a Virgo. You're a... <laughs> Muscly Virgo, <laughs> but no, that's it. 
Aryans have got prominent heads, hence my buff head. <laughs> but, but they do. Taurians have got thick necks. I've picked Taurians by their neck. In fact, once I couldn't, um, well, I didn't guess this ta a Taurus, a Taurian, and, and, he, and he said, um, I'm the one with the, the thick neck. And I said, oh, okay, that's Taurus. Now, how did he know to say that? He doesn't know this. He didn't know this. I know that. But he, he said, I'm the, we have the thick necks. You see how things are getting around? Uh, expressions? I'm a Sagittarius, not the fun size, so. Yes. Have a look at your Sagittarian friends. They've got these, the males, they've got these big thighs. Have a look at Geminis, their long arms, or the way they move their arms. It's amazing. Their arms are like air. Have a look at the Leos that get around like, you know, and the Cancerians, because they're summer. It's hot. No, this is how it works. Arians are the babies of the zodiac. Why are they the babies? Well, that's, the sun is a baby here. He's a little boy. And he's climbing because he has to climb the mountain to get to his enthronement. And the enthronement is always here on the summer solstice because that's when the sun, the sun is the biggest. Just like his bride, the bride, Mary Magdalene. New moon, full moon. That's the glory of the moon. That's the bleeding of the moon. In the menstruation cycle, that's where the bleeding happens. New moon. That's your cycle, ladies. It takes 14 days for the egg to mature. And if it's fertilized at this point, you'll have a son or child. 270 days later. Otherwise, 14 days later, it'll bleed. That's the new moon. You can't see it because it's in between you and the sun. So you can't see the new moon, but you can see that one because that is always opposite the sun, the full moon, always. When the sun is setting in the west, then you'll see the full moon coming up in the east. They have to be. So the sun's enthronement is here, Ra. Horus, Ra, Set. Well, interesting. The war of Set, Horus and Set. Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, all the twins in the Bible, Jesus and Satan. Satan rules Capricorn. Satan kills Jesus because Jesus, this is cardinal fire, this is fixed fire where the sun lives, the sun rules Leo, and this is mutable fire, Sagittarius. So the fire cycle, of which there is none in this quadrant here, is killed by Saturn. He is the killer on the 21st of December, which is T Saint Tammuz Day, and Tammuz is Osiris, and Osiris is Saturn, the brother of Jesus, the son who kills him. See how it works? It's amazing. It's scary to think that they've literalized this story. It's pure poetry of the heaven. So, you see, we have March the 21st here. We have June the 21st, Prince William's birthday. December the 21st and September the 21st. Everything starts here. Everything. Remember, it's the head. It's where the, the fractal begins. It, it all starts with cardinal fire because cardinal fire is the first part of the fire. Cardinal is the beginning signs. They are the door openers. Cardo in Latin means hinge. When the sun passes those days, it crosses over those days or passes over. That's why there are four crucifixions in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Because they are crucifixions, crossovers. The sun is crossing over. It's being crucified on the cross of matter. What's that the symbol of? The earth. earth. The symbol of the earth? Um, oh, okay. Do you think they knew something? It's this science. It all goes back to the science. That's the symbol for the sun. Okay, target? Just you watch how many symbols of those Illuminati corporations have to do with the sun. I'll show you, that's going to scare you. <laughs> it's scary. It really is scary what they're doing sublim subliminally.
What I've done here is I've basically made that bigger, that uh, graph that we had in the first one, right? There's the Tropic of Cancer and there's the Tropic of Capricorn, okay? And there's the equator, really. You can just extend it. You understand what I've done? So there's your summer and there's your winter, your good and your evil. Remember we had hell down here, inferno, inverno, okay? Now... First thing I want to bring to your attention here, we're going to, we're going to have, I'm going to wrap seven wheels around here. I'm going to wrap the body of the man. The head is always here. And then the Pisces touch the back of the head in mutable water, thick cardinal fire. This is the starting line. <coughs> And I'll show you why. Now, interesting, fire in the head, water in the feet. We are a magnet. We are a magnet. We're magnetic. And we've, obviously, the fire must connect to the air, <coughs> the fire in the head of Aries, to the air above the head, as the philosophers say, and the water in Pisces is, is always connecting to the earth. That's the magnetic polarization, okay? That's how you've got to see. So we're gonna, I'm going to wrap the body around here and I'm going to show you how all the stars, there's always, Taurus has always got its three other star um, constellations. Orion is he, in here. Orion, the famous Orion, the Lamb of God that fights with the dragon. There's a red star in Scorpion, that's the dragon. Every opposition... That's Herod and John the Baptist, that's the lamb, and that's the fiery dragon, the four fixed points. Check these oppositions. There's a reason they're there, <laughs> all right? There's a reason why Libra is the opposite of Aries. They both have to do with equinoxes, and you'll see why. There's a reason why Cancer has a unicorn in it, opposite to the Capricorn. The corns that are there, the unicorn, which is also the cancer, the crab, and the scarab, the beetle, is also here. Just like here we have the eagle and the serpent and the scorpion, here we have three animals also in these two signs. One of them is the unicorn opposite the Capricorn because these are the corns, the solstices. Right? Now, <clears throat> Orion is here. What you're going to notice as we go through the body is all those stars correspond with the stars in your body. So it's all the same thing. Uh, no, they're not the deacons, but everyone has, for instance, in Gemini, you've got Canis Menor and Canis Major belong to this sector. Here in Aries, I think you've got um, Perseus is in here. Perseus is one of the, the stars, but there's the, um, there's the 36 uh, outer constellations, right? along with the constellations of the zodiac. There was 36 of them, so you need to know those ones too. You don't need to know them, but you, as you learn, you realise Orion is in there. It's important to know that Orion is in, and you'll see why later, okay? But um, I'm going to wrap the body around here. In a minute, we're going to do the agricultural year, and we're going to see if, the, if those signs, we're going to pay attention and see if any of those signs happen to correspond with the uh, planets, uh, with the seasons below. I wonder. I wonder why the bull is there in April. Let's see if we can work this out. I'm going to wrap seven of these wheels around this and you will see the tarot is here. <coughs> the tarot is the 12 cards. There's 22 cards in the tarot. And the 10 bodies including the Earth, Uranus and Neptune. That's, this is what the tarot is based on, guys. Kabbalah is in here. The Hindu system is in here. The Mayan system is in here. Everything is in here. Right? The tarot, which comes from the Torah, which means the wheel. This is the Torah. This is everything. It's Aphrodite's belt. It's King Arthur and the round table. There's just 12 knights. That would be Lancelot. Um, or... The guy with the spear, Sagittarius, would be Lancelot. This is the Maseroth of the Bible. This is Jesus going through the circuit of Galilee, 
because when you look in your Strong's Concordance and you check Galilee, it tells you it's the circuit of the Maseroth, the circuit of the Zodiac. So it's telling you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> syncretism was something that the Renaissance uh, people knew a lot about because Pico, one of the um, foremost uh, Renaissance masters, he pretty much brought syncretism to the attention of the world when he went down to Rome with his 900 theses. Here they are. That's another zero uh, to the 90 um, theses of uh, Martin Luther 30 years after Pico. Anyway, Pico went down to Rome and he uh, decided that he would uh, challenge the, uh, the Vatican to a debate to prove that uh, all the sciences, all the philosophies and theologies and schools of thought can all be syncretized into one uh, homogenous, harmonious unity of teaching. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is the, the knowledge and the understanding of what all the philosophies are based on. And it's a simple uh, cycle of nature or cycles of nature. Okay, so with one graph we should be able to uh, pretty much um, explain how most of the sciences work and how much of the philosophies work. So it's very interesting how Picor treated the, uh, the subject. He went down to Rome because he was trying to um, bring back the Prisca Theologia. You see, the, this word was very much on his lips as it was on uh, Marsilio Ficino's lips, the guy who translated the Hermetica. Now, <clears throat> the Hermetica, Hermetic wisdom has always been there. It's been there for thousands and thousands of years. And according to um, uh, Stephen Meller, uh, who was a uh, person who um, went down to Egypt and, and uh, spoke to the indigenous wisdom keepers, and that would be uh, Abdel Hakim Awyan, who has now passed away. But here Stephen explains how um, the indigenous wisdom keepers uh, explained many things about the true history of Egypt and how Egypt has an antiquity of um, at least 50 to 65,000 years with that particular consciousness, wave of consciousness that uh, created uh, such wonderful buildings like the, uh, the pyramids. Now those pyramids are built in such a way that it is impossible to replicate them today with our science and technology. The Pyramid Codes is probably another one of uh, the products that uh, I would like to bring to your attention when it comes to the truth about Egypt. Okay, Carmen Butler has also uh, interviewed Abdel Hakim Awyan in uh, this wonderful uh, documentary which shows the true antiquity of things like the the Sphinx and the uh, Great Pyramid and all the megalithic sites down in Saqqara and Dendra and uh, Luxor, etc. So, and uh, with that, I would like to um, bring your attention to the, um, the Commission School of Ancient Mysticism. And I'll be uh, doing a two week tour in Egypt next year in October uh, with. Um, uh, Yusuf and Patricia Awyan, the uh, son and uh, daughter-in-law of uh, Abdel. So when you watch, you can watch that. Um, you, can, you can see that on YouTube, but uh, I'd recommend you get that for your own collection. And you'll see Abdel there uh, discussing the true origins of this, uh, this wonderful science. Okay? So what Rome would like us to believe is that uh, Civilization's about 6,000 years old, and there was an Adam and an Eve, and, um, and apart from that, they were very barbaric, and many of the uh, human brothers lived in caves and then, of course, evolved their intelligence, and now here we are at the peak of all wisdom and intelligence in linear history. Whereas the Prisca Teologia, 
uh, proves that this is false. Absolutely false. We live in cycles whereby consciousness grows and then recedes. Grows and then recedes. And we have been at the, um, at the bottom of a wave of loss of consciousness for about 5,000 years. Uh, again, again, according to um, Abdel, the uh, indigenous wisdom keeper, and we've been in the age of Amun for 5,000 years. And it's the age of darkness and slumber, spiritual slumber. And before that was the age of Aten, you see, and which had more light. Okay, and then it goes back and back to the golden age. But we've been at the, the bottom of the wave for such a long time. So syncretism is all about bringing back the unity of the religio slash science that we once enjoyed on this earth. So there's a, there is abundant proof that once upon a time we were all united in the one science. And um, the proof of that is in that um, we find that the gods of various cultures seem to have the same deeds to their credit and the same numbers and the same names, etc. For instance, Zeus of the Greeks seems to uh, be very uh, similar in his actions and behaviour to uh, Jupiter of the Romans, etc, etc. And Thoth, or Thoth of the Egyptians, seems to be the same guy that the uh, Greeks call Hermes and the Romans call uh, Mercurius. And the Hindus call, or the, uh, the Easterners call Buddha. So what, in effect, we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling back the, uh, the information that comes from all of these sources to show that they all have one common thread underpinning them. The pyramid I showed you at the bottom of the cerebellum and the olive, they are here. So this is the head and this is the, the spinal cord going down here, but it's also upside down. Everything is mirrored in Egypt. So this is what happens. Well, let's start from here and you've got the delta, and of course Cairo is here, and then you go down like this, and then you've got this big curve, which is this curve here. And this is where Dendra and Thebes is, the big Theban complex. Two miles, two and a half miles away from Karnak is the temple of Luxor. These two are without a doubt the most famous of the temples. Luxor is here, and Karnak is here. So what I want to do is I want to do a big curve. What I'm doing here is placing Luxor here and Karnak here. There's two and a half miles. And these two temples, were con these two temples, the most popular, the most loved temples in history, bar none. And have a look at uh, John Anthony West's work. He's been doing work with the Temple of Man, Shwala de Lubitsch and stuff like that, and you'll understand what's going on. Okay, but Karnak, this was connected by an avenue of sphinxes, two and a half miles. And then here, this big temple complex, the biggest in the world, from the Nile River, you have the avenue of rams. There's the avenue of rams connecting to the Nile River. So that's what, this, is, this is the avenue of rams. This goes directly to the Nile River. So you walk up from the river and you go to Ramses' temple. Now, what I want to show you is how the Abrahamic religion was practiced here. And then it went downhill after that, possibly with the misunderstanding of what Akhenaten was trying to do. Akhenaten was trying to unify it and bring back the, the higher days. And that's why Abdel Hakim Awyan is a very vital link to all of this because he explains that Aten, Aten is a period of light. We see we are in the Amun period. We've been in Amun, the hidden one, for 5,000 years. 5,000 years. Before that was Aten. Before that was, help me, Elvin. Orn. Orn. Before that was 
Kepha? No, Ra, Ra and then Kepha. Ra yeah. and Kepha. Kepha the scarab. Yeah. This is the golden age. This is the hidden age down here, you see. I'm going into Kepha well, now. Yeah. What Akhenaten tried to do was he tried to get the Amun religion back to this light. And, and see, that's why when Thebes, this is Thebes here, these are the two great temples. But on the western bank, where in Egyptian they say, if you're, if you're westing, you're dying. Everything mortuary, everything to do with death, like the pyramids, tombs, mortuary temples, they are all on the west side. These are cult these are cult temples. There's only two kinds in Egypt. Your cult temples, Amun-Ra and Ra here too. But over here in the west, you see, this is the Valley of the Kings. Right in there, there's a big temple for Hatshepsut. These are all 18th dynasty kings and queens, okay, that I'm mentioning right now. Uh, Amenhotep was one of the builders here. Amenhotep III. Amen. Hotep. Amun is Solomon, by the way. See, all of this, and what I'm going to show you is that all of this temple complex was the temple of Solomon, which is your body, because they go through all the body parts. You see, they start here with the heart. There is Jupiter. Jupiter exalts in Cancer. Memphis, that's Memphis. That's Heliopolis. This is Thermopolis. Hermes, Hermopolis, rather. <laughs> Hermopolis. This is, over here is Dendra, where you have Hathor, the cow. So what you've got is this, basically. You've got Heliopolis, Jupiter, the exaltation of Cancer, called Ptah. Here you have Hermopolis Hermes. Here you have the cow, Hathor, and then you have the ram in Karnak. Please take note. Now, there's Hatshepsut, there's Medinai, Medinai Habu, big, big temple with, the, with uh, Ramses III. Ramses III. These two together, these temples are massive. And over here you have the uh, Ramesseum, uh, around about here somewhere, not far from Karnak. On the other side you have the Ramesseum and you have the Colossi of Memnon. You know the biggest statues in the world, the Colossi of Memnon? And behind that was supposed to be the temple of Amenhotep III. And that's totally destroyed. There's not a stone left upon a stone. That's Solomon, guys. That is the temple. All of these temple comp complexes were decommissioned. They were, they were running these temples for healing. The priests of Ammon, Ammon-Ra. This was for, all for healing. That's all it was. And they used to give, in the mortuary temples, they used to give offerings to the gods. Because when the king dies, the soul, the astral portion of the body, the magnetic part of the soul, lingers on. And it needs food. And that's why they used to bring offerings to the temples. But now we don't do that anymore. And so our ancestors are suffering. Or the spirit, the consciousness, the collective consciousness, we're not feeding it. We're not sacrificing to the gods. They used to do that. They used to bring some, like the Chinese do. They have some oranges and some apples and they've got their little altar because the spirits eat the auric field of the fruits. And you don't want to bring scabby fruit and put it on there and just and think, well, get away with that. I'll have the good fruit myself and I'll give that to my ancestors and to the gods it, because they know that. And you'll see how it works when you die. When you lose these bodies in 60, 70 years, whatever, you will understand However long a life you've got in this physical form, after that you will understand what it means, the offerings to the gods. And they were giving offerings to the gods and then these were decommissioned. And the decommissioning of these temples has to do with the Hyksos, the shepherd kings that came and destroyed this science. And then you had invaders, always invaders, coming to Egypt and destroying and mocking the true religion science of Egypt. 130 years ago, the Reverend Robert Taylor said, And this you see, sirs, that religion is nothing more than science, most monstrously misunderstood, and science is religion properly and wisely explained. If I have not yet done it, I shall develop that sun worship, obscured by the wintry mists of religious ignorance, that true hell upon earth, 
is the secret of all sacred scriptures and of all religions, religious and mysterious associations. Manly P. Hall, The Occult Anatomy of Man. All the priests of the ancient world were anatomists. They recognized that all the functions of nature were reproduced in miniature in the human body. They therefore used man as the textbook, teaching their disciples that to understand man was to understand the universe. These wise men believed that every star in the heavens, every element in the earth, and every function in nature was represented by a corresponding centre pole or activity within the human body. Um, <clears throat> now, the four cardinal points, these are the four cardinal points. We need to take, we need to pay special attention to them. Once you pay special attention to these cardinal points, then you will understand astrology. Everything else is just filling in the shadows, as Thomas Burgoyne says. Get the, get the cardinal points right and work out what's going on there. It's big. And here's what Marcus Manilius says 2,000 years ago about the cardinal points. Come now, prepare an attentive mind for learning the cardinal points. So he's, he's, he's telling us now, just prepare your minds for the cardinal points because they are so pivotal to understanding and you're going to see how. You're going to walk away from here today and you're going to go, wow, okay, now I get it. Because of the cardinal points. Four in all, they have positions in the firmament permanently fixed and receive in succession the speeding signs. Oh yeah, Arians, Arians like me, they're fast all right. They never walk, they're always running. And Cancerians, Librans and Capricorns. Motion is their modus operandi, you know, like they, they're moving. They are the speeding signs. Uh, but they also speed because, well, let Marcus Minilius explain. One looks out from the rising of the heavens as they are born into the world and has the first view of the earth from the level horizon. Aries. So he says, one, I'll read that again. Uh, one looks out from the rising of the heavens as they are born into the world and has the first view of the earth from the level horizon. Remember on March the 21st, it's level. Equilibrium. 6 a.m. Bang on, there's the sun. And has the first view of the earth from the level horizon. The, f the second faces it from the opposite edge of the sky. Libra. The sign of Libra looks like this. What does that look like to you? Does that look like the sun going through the equator? Like the Nissan car, the Nissan car thing, you know? Nissan, the sun going through, through the equator on the month of Nisan. That's Nisan in Jewish, March. So that's why Nisan has, a, a, the car symbol has a sun going through the equator, just like Libra, sun going through the equator. Okay, so much for these uh, devilish little glyphs. Oh, the devil invented those. Um, the point from which the starry sphere retires and hurtles headlong into Tartarus. So Libra is at the point where the starry field retires and, and hurtles headlong into Tartarus. This is Tartarus down here, remember? The inferior regions. In fact, inferior is how the Latins call winter. Inf inverno. And in fact, infernal, hell, is inferno. You just re replace the V for an F. Okay? Infernal, hell, supposed to be hot, is actually the wo another word for inverno, which is winter. The third marks the zenith of high heaven, where wearied Phobos halts with panting steeds and rests the day and determines the midpoint of shadows. Phobos, being the sun, Pho Phobos, halts because the sun always halts at the solstices for three days. He stops. His four steeds, the sun is always travelling with four steeds, you'll always see it. 
in uh, alchemy and, and pictures of the sun. And these are the four steeds, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. How many colours are the four horsemen of the apoc apocalypse? Can you tell me? The white horse, the morning sun. The green horse, or the pale horse, the green of summer. The red horse, the sun setting it before sunset. The black horse, the sun in the darkness of night and winter. They are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. But the, because the, the apocalypse means the revealing. See, the year, as the sun goes through those 12 signs, Jesus going with his 12 disciples, he is revealing the good, the good and acceptable year of the Lord. So he's going around with his four horses, his four steeds. The cardinal points, they are the steeds. Now, um, I'm just going to read something really delicious from this book, Alvin Boyd Kuhn, and it's called The Tree of Knowledge. Just magnificent. Uh, <clears throat> explaining how, um, how our descent into matter and the experiences we acquire with this, um, this fleshly body, with conditioned consciousness, because you see, as we descend through those rings of those planets, we get conditions placed upon us. And they are heavy cloaks, heavy garments that the planets bestow on us. Um, and in effect, they are handicaps, really, obstructions that we have to surmount. So, um, but uh, in our ascent, this is a beautiful little illustration that Alvin Boyd Kuhn uh, uh, makes to um, help one appreciate what's going on. He says, we can conceive the dramatist as desiring to veil the open sense by a playful ruse. Well, he's talking about uh, the, the, this drama, this story of us coming down. He says, much as a rich and indulgent father, head of a great business concern, would offer his son full participation in the enterprise, yet at the start of the son's serious career, he would say to him, uh, you are to be one of us in the management, but lest you try to take hold of your prerogatives before you have mastered all the details of the business, to know the right from the wrong course of procedure, I must send you out into the factory to learn it all from the bottom up. Yeah, sweep some floors, boy. And then when you learn all the, you know, the, the mechanisms and you know, all the procedures, then you'll be fit to uh, sit in my seat one day. So uh, this sums up almost incontestably the gist of the logic of the situation. Let the argumentative chips fall away where they may. And it does bring out rational light when all previous exegesis has left the matter shrouded in Stygian darkness. It may be the final basis of all sanity in our religious psychology to understand that even God cannot give unto his children, beloved children, the bliss and blessedness of divine life without imposing on them the ineluctable condition that they earn the right to it by developing the capability for it in the time-tempting mill of evolution. Well said. Alvin Boyd Kuhn. Anything you read of Alvin Boyd Kuhn, and this is a must, <clears throat> okay? Who is this King of Glory? Because he has exposed all of these dramas in here and how Jesus is the Son, S-U-N, of God in the skies. But what it means to us is consciousness. It's also referring to consciousness. It's also referring to our heart chakra. It's also talking about electricity, L. You see, why do you think um, <clears throat> the, the light and, and electricity was called electricity with an E-L, you know, L. That's one of the Elohim. Well, because that's where it comes from. Electricity comes from L. Uh, so <clears throat> now just a few other little interesting points. He's got such exquisite language that I just have to read uh, some more of his. 
The artistry of ancient allegorism taught, caught the world at a low point of its intelligence and mired the interpretive mind in Christianity in the worst slow of misconception ever to affic, afflict the human fancy. Our dullness of comprehension and blank stupidity in handling our great heritage of ancient my mythicism <clears throat> have marred and scarred the face of history. <clears throat> Absolutely true. Bizarre and almost ridiculous as it sounds in the ears of modern people, it can be said truly that philosophy is and must ever be man's true saviour. Yep, so um, <clears throat> Manly P. Hall, the pineal gland. Uh, what does he have to say about the pineal gland? Well, the gland itself is not the third eye, but only the reflection of that organ, its counterpart or symbol in the material constitution. It is a relic bearing witness to an ancient faculty, and because it, is en it has endured through these eras of spiritual obscuration, promises the ultimate restoration of the function to which it bears witness. The true power of the gland is in its spiritual counterpart, even as the whole strength of man abides in his visible nature. The true third eye cannot be seen by the ordinary vision, but is visible to the clairvoyant as a vibrant spectrumatic aura surrounding the outer body of the gland and pulsating with an electric light. <clears throat> the first sephira, Keitha, <clears throat> everything I've just showed you, this is what syncretism is all about. There's the Kabbalah, there's all the tarot cards, there's the 22 paths of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, all the alphabets. Here are the planets, there's Mercury, there's Mars, here is the zodiac, Aries in the head, the fire. Taurus in the throat, the earth, Gemini air, Cancer water. This is the whole system. Here's the, um, the, the Eastern chakra systems, you see, and how they correspond with the Jewish. So this one, gets, this one here gets two. There's two. And this one here, the blue chakra, the throat chakra. And this one. You see, this is supposed to be the pineal gland. And this is supposed to be the two hemispheres, the two hemispheres of the brain. You see, and in this system, there's Keitha. And uh, <clears throat> what he's saying here is Keitha, the crown, signified the pineal gland. And that the next two Sephiroth, Chokmah and Binah, one placed on either side of it, were the two lobes of the cerebrum. Marsilio Ficino was... Um, the guy who translated the Hermetica and the, uh, basically the guy who uh, spoke about the Prisca Theologia and reminded the world of the ancient teachings of Hermes. And um, <clears throat> he spoke a lot about the sun and the planets and how they work. Right? So I'm just going to read a little bit from this book. <clears throat> the first book of the Hermetic Opus <clears throat> contains a story with familiar Gnostic themes. Pymander, the divine mind, of course, he, this, this is Marsilio, he, he translated the Pymander. Pymander is the mind. The twelve, the, this, that's the mind over matter. See, mind is twelve, matter is seven, okay? Uh, so he was the first one to translate it, so he should be able to talk about it. Appears to Hermes, and so divine mind appears to Hermes and describes the origin of nature. God brought forth a demiurge, he relates, a god of fire and breath. Who fashioned seven governors, who envelop with their circles the sensible world. All of the lower world depends upon the seven governors. Then the father God created a man in his own image, a man so beautiful that God fell in love with him. He allowed the man to enter the sphere of the demiurge, and there to behold the seven governors. Obviously the pattern of mankind comes from here. That's what it's talking about. 
but he allowed that pattern to be introduced into this solar system. Okay? Because uh, that's where the creation happens. It didn't crea it, the creation did not happen here on this earth as literalist uh, evolutionists teach, Darwinians. Or as the theocratic types will teach you, oh, God made Adam from the dust, literally, and Eve from the rib. You know, it's literal to them because they cannot see the three dimensions that are coming up out of this. They can't see those hidden pictures because they're not looking and they don't care to look. They want someone else to tickle their ears in church. Oh, yes, priest type. You know, who cares what you do in your private time? Probably, you know, with little boys. They don't care about that. And they offer no protection to their children when they bring them to church because there is no protection for children in any of the Christian corporate churches because they don't deal with pedophiles in, you know, with, with justice and out there and the law and the police and everything. No, no, it's all in-house. We take care of this in-house because we don't want Jehovah's name to be spoiled. Poor Jehovah. <clears throat> and of course God is concerned about that, isn't he? Well, don't you dob brother uh, Smith in because he's just raped six boys in the congregation. Don't you do that. I've got a name to protect up here, please. This is how they think and they love it. I've seen it. I was a Jehovah's Witness for 20, 22 years and I saw how they treated pedophiles. Just like that. Just as I have said. It's disgraceful. It's murderous. They are murderers. This, this is what frees. Uh, <clears throat> then the Father God created a man in his own image, a man so beautiful that God fell in love with him. He allowed the man to enter the sphere of the demiurge. That's Kronos. The demiurge. He's the boss of the demiurge, Saturn. And there to behold the seven governors, they too fell in love with him and gave him part of their rule. Finally, the man broke through the circles of the governors to know the power of God himself. And that's what we're doing today. We're learning how to break through the circles of the governors to get to God himself, which is who? None other than you. Because there ain't no God out there but you. It's all us. It's all one. One consciousness. And that's what these guys knew. And they were trying to save us from the division of all the 30,000 Christian denominations that have separated us, Methodist on one corner and Presbyterian. And they all say, oh, it's good to have the churches in our community because it brings unity into the, into the community and it brings cohesiveness and all sorts of Christian values. Really? Nah. The opposite. They are very perverse and divisive. And we'll never get any of this. Never. Until the churches are gone and religion and spirituality returns. <clears throat> Gifted with all of this power and knowledge, the man realised to nature below the beautiful form of God, and nature loved him, having seen his beautiful features reflected in the water and his shadow on the earth. The man too saw a form like his own reflected in the water and wished to be united with it, a wish immediately accomplished. Nature and man were united in love. Chaos and Eros. Love and Chaos. Thus, mankind has a double nature, mortal in his body, immortal in the essential man. His mortal nature is under the, under the dominion of the planets, but his immortal nature is not. That's reading from page 56 of The Planets Within of Marsilio Ficino. Now, the Red Sea is your blood. Alvin Boyd Kuhn again. Turns up in all the interesting books, this guy, because he writes them. <laughs> and these are the books that you shouldn't read if you go to church. Because you'll get all confused and the devil will uh, pull you away from church now. He will. And he'll deceive you. For if, and he says here, For if Proclus is right, those infinite points of light, those infinite points of light are the scintillating brain cells of the mind of God. It is declared that a normal human brain has four quadrillion brain cells. We can generously allow God a few quintillions at least. That's what astrology is. It's studying the anatomy of God. God being the physical universe. You see, in, in, in this hermetic system there are two gods. There's the causal God who remains still. And that God there is probably best described by uh, Pseudo-Dionysius. 
when he talks about this wonderful cause. Let me just share a little bit from here. He talks about divine names, okay? Because these, he's, this guy is a Neoplatonist of the 4th century and he's not going to put a name on God. You know, the Hindus call it Anama with the privative A in front of Nama. Nama means name. Anama means no name. You don't name this dude. You don't name it. There's no name. If you can name it, it's not him. It's not it. It's something else and you're fooled. Okay, so this is what they say. This is why we must not dare to resort to words or conceptions concerning that hidden divinity which transcends being, apart from what the sacred scriptures have divinely revealed. For if we may trust the superlative wisdom and truth of scripture, the things of God are revealed in each mind in proportion to its capacities. And the divine goodness is such that out of concern for our salvation, it deals out the immeasurable and infinite in limited measures. Just as the senses can neither grasp nor perceive the things of the mind, just as representation and shape cannot take in the simple and the shapeless, just as corp corpor corporal uh, form cannot lay hold of the intangible and incorporeal. incorporeal. By the same standard, the truth of truth, beings are surpassed by the infinity beyond being, intelligences by that oneness which is beyond intelligence. Indeed, the inscrutable one is out of the reach of every rational process. I can go on. I mean, the divine names is, is full. Uh, this, kind, this is the kind of divine enlightenment into which we have been initiated by the hidden tradition of our inspired teachers, a tradition at one with scripture. So this, this does not conflict with anything in the Bible. It's just that the people who are interpreting it think that it has got nothing to do with each other because they don't understand it. You see, and he's saying divine mind gave it to us. I mean, I read this <coughs> in my first presentation on astrology from, Marcus, uh, from um, Firmicus Maternus saying how divine mind through Mercurius, Hermes Trismegistus, gave us the secrets through careful observation, many, many years of observing the stars and what they do. So um, <clears throat> he says, as long as religions cling to the lower rungs of the scale of interpretation of their scriptures, there will be endless points of difference between them. If they lift if they will lift the sense to the upper third and fourth levels, the apparent outer grounds of difference will dissolve in the unity and harmony of a lofty conceptual enlightenment. Here's another great one, Manly P. Hall, the, the occult anatomy of man, in which here he explains that the, um, the holy land is the body. And he exposes all of these in the, from the scriptures. I'll just give you some, some examples. The sacred river is the spinal, ca uh, spinal canal which has its source among the peaks of the mountains. The holy men in their retreats represent the spiritual sight of the human brain and there are seven sleepers of the Quran who must remain in the darkness of their caves until the spirit fire revitalizes them. The brain is the upper room referred to in the Gospels where Jesus met with his disciples. And it is said that the disciples themselves represent the 12 convolutions of the brain. It is these 12 convolutions which later send their messages by means of the nerves into the body below to convert the Gentiles or preach the Gospel in the Middle Earth. You see? So Jesus is up here, the king, and the 12 convolutions of the brain. And through the nervous system, he sends his disciples to go preaching to the Gentiles below. And the Gentiles are down here in Sodom and Gomorrah because that bottom chakra where sodomy happens is called Sodom. <clears throat> and the one above is Gomorrah. You see, it's the holy land. The Jordan is here. It's in the head. And the Jordan starts from, the, Jordan starts from the, 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 the feet of Aquarius, you see. Aquarius is pouring down and he starts that river flowing, the Eridanus. And the Eridanus goes all the way to here, to the Pleiades. 
the seven sisters. <clears throat> Who are the seven sisters? They're everywhere. Those seven just appear everywhere in our culture. Subaru, the Pleiades. It's the pineal gland, right? There it is. And that's the Eridanus. You see, so John the Baptist, January. Janus is John. That's just John. Don't be fooled. This month used to be called the Baptism Month because as the sun climbs up from the 25th of December here, he gets a hell of a baptising by January the Baptist, the water bearer. And he says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he baptises him in the Jordan. That's the Eridanus. There's a lot of this stuff in here. Okay, I'm not going to be able to dwell much on this, but um, is Mars. When you go to Jerusalem, it's built on seven hills. There are 60 cities around the world that are built on seven hills. Not just Rome, but Rome is Rama. Rome is Ra. Rome wants to rule. London, El Ondon. El Ondon. El and Ra, they rule the world. And Paris, Isis. In fact, when you go to Paris, you can see the Notre Dame. Notre Dame is Isis, Mary, the Virgin. She rules Isis, Ra and El. They are the three cities that rule the world. And you can add, you know, DC, you can add Switzerland up in the hills there and all the banksters and criminals that are stopping us from knowing all this stuff. And you can add uh, Zionism. Not this beautiful Jewish religion and Muslim religion and Christian religion. Zionism. Again, Zion comes from these ancient words. See, this is the, build, the, the stone that the builders rejected. It's cancer. The summer solstice. See the checkered floor? Spirit and matter. Jerusalem, built on Mount Moriah. That's where, and in, in Arabic, it's Marwa. Mar, wa, Mars, Mars, Mount Moriah. That's where Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. And then God says, oh, you don't do that. There's, there's a ram in the thicket. Kill the ram. You see, remember in Jericho, to pull down Jericho, you have to blow the, the, the ram's horn seven times. Moses blew the ram's horn, killed the bull. He says, you get out of the bull territory. This was Egypt. They loved the bull and Hathor. And then they were transiting, transitioning to, to Ares in the 18th dynasty. And there was a big problem going from the bull to the ram. This is why the Jews, when Jacob sent his sons down to Egypt, he says, don't tell them that you are shepherds. Because the Egyptians hate shepherds. You tell them you're a herdsman. You tell them that you're, you look after cattle. Because Hathor was ruling at the time. And the transit was very, very hard. The Egyptians did not like this change because this was much more... You know, it, was, it was closer to the, the glory days and this is really descending, you see. Now we're in the time of Pisces and coming to Aquarius. So this is a 24,000 year backward calendar, okay? There's four wheels here that you need. Fundamental wheels. The day, starting at 6am. The year, starting at March. The backward processional calendar of 24 to 25,000 years. And the body, the head, Ra, Resh, the head, and the two feet. What have we got here? The Alpha and the Omega. Notice Omega, that's the lower lower case, it's like a W. That's the lower case omega, alpha and omega. Notice the placement, alpha and omega. Same, same here. You see Amun-Ra, he's carrying Aries, the tree, the tree of Aries. Remember this M that comes here? And here there's a T, isn't there? There's the T here of the Jews. The covenant with the the sun on top, the two trees, there they are, the Ankh and the Woz. There it is, Aries, 
Does it see the ram? Aries, Mars and Venus. Adam and Eve. She evens things out. This guy is also even, but he starts things at the head. Jesus, Alpha and Omega. Jesus, Alpha and Omega. This is Christ. This is Jesus. Jesus dies for our sins. Christ rises. If you're a Freemason, you never say Jesus Christ. You say Christ Jesus because they know the order. Christ comes before Jesus. This is first. This is last. This is Cain. This is Abel. Cain means metal smith. Iron. Mars. Cain is into agriculture. Abel is into, well, this is uh, agriculture and this is gain. When the, when the moon comes down into this sign, it's called a harvest moon. Harvest moon, because you harvest. When it comes to here, you always have the hunting moon. See, Cain, who kills Abel over here, the light that kills the darkness, is Cain is, brings his harvest to God. Let's have a look at Cain and Abel, shall we? Genesis 4, 1 to 16, Cain and Abel. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of his firstborn flock. You see, because if, if, if you feed the flock well in the harvest time, Cain, if Cain does a good job and, and the sun shines and he's, and he's productive, the Lord will look upon his offering with favour. But if you're able to, if you're a good shepherd, like Abel, and you're able to keep your, your flock nice and fat in the winter, you are the one that gets the praise. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions, from some of the firstborn of his flock. And the Lord looked with favour on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favour. It wasn't a good year. The harvest was low. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. The sun, you know, it gets irritated when he can't, use his virile, ray, ra energy to produce grain, he gets saddened about this. You see, so saying is, Cain is downcast and he's thinking, I've got to kill my brother. You know, he does better in the, in the winter than I'm doing in the... What am I doing? You know, the summer crops are not working. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you but you must rule over it. So you see, Cain and Abel, the Lord's not happy with Cain. What does Cain do? He goes and kills his brother. Now Cain said to his brother, let us go out into the field. Come with me, let us go out into the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother? I don't know. He replied, am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen. Your brother's blood cries to me out of the ground. This is the ground. Now you're under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood. The blood, it receives, the ground receives his brother's blood. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops to you. You will be a relentless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land and I'll be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, No, not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Remember seven. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that the mark is the red, the red sign. Cain is canine. It's the dog. The dog is Aries. Mars, red. That's the mark. When you see Mars, you know it's him. He's red. There's only four red stars in the sky. Sometimes Saturn looks a bit red too. So you've got six dudes up there that are red. All the rest are white, yellowish stars. Some are greenish, but predominantly white. But you've got four red stars. Antares, Betelgeuse, Arcturus the bear. 
the brightest star in the northern hemisphere. You'll know about that one. The red bright bear in booties. And the seventh, the other one is Aldebaran, the eye of the bull. Aldebaran has one. Betelgeuse in Orion has one. There's one over here in Virgo, booties, Arcturus, and there's Scorpio, Antares. So when you see Mars, you know that God put a mark on his head. He's clear, Mars, and he goes around fast. Saturn goes slow, 30 years. Mars goes every two years. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. East of Eden. Abel means herdman. Cain means metalsmith. I said that already. Iron. It has to do with the iron. And so, and here you have the harvest of Cain, which God wasn't happy with. And these are the moons, man. When you come to September every year, you have, before the equinox, you have a harvest moon. And then at the start of the year, you start hunting. This is where you start hunting. The, ha the hunting moon begins right on cue. None of, this is, none of this goes out of everything co-relates to this wheel. This is the wheel. In Greek, arnion is the word that is used 30 times for lamb. Amnos, amon, I've already said this, is the amen that is used when St. John sees, sees Jesus, see the lamb of God. He uses amon, the word amon. Please take note, and all church-going types that are watching this presentation, take note that the land is Ammon. And we're going to go back to Egypt to find Ammon-Ra, because th this whole thing originated there. Well, it didn't originate there, but it was practiced there. They practiced this religion there. They were faithful to the will of God, the will of God, the law of God, the Torah, the tarot. It all comes from Egypt, because they were practicing it and benefiting from this science. And we in the Dark Ages have gone, have gone back to Egypt and we've gone and, and, and destroyed the hieroglyphs because they're from the devil. And yet they are only words and containers and thoughts. Thoughts of the pure truth that comes from this sacred and wonderful religion. Eve. So with the doctrine of the coming one, yes, on the earth, uh, saviors will appear. You see, this is why Buddha was here, Hermes, 6,000 years ago. <laughs> and the sinners were here. And the Marses and the Abrahams and the Jesuses and the, and the uh, Islamists with Venus. You see, there's Moses, Michelangelo's Moses. There's Alexander the Great with the horns of the ram. There's Ramesses, Jupiter, Amun. There they are with the healing rods in their hands, copper and zinc, the brazen serpent of Moses. There's Jesus, Jupiter, the beneficent one, four. Oh, and there's Ra, the eye of Ra, the eye of Ra. Look at that, it's cross-section of your midbrain. The optic thalamus, pineal gland, Cerebrum, look at the tree, the cerebellum, the medulla oblongata. There it is, the Egyptians knew their stuff. Plutarch, 2,000 years ago, in Isis and Osiris. For their king and lord Osiris, they portray by means of an eye. The meaning of the name as many eyed. On the theory that os in Egyptian means many, and iris is I. Harry Potter, Horus, Ptah, Helios the Sun, the healer. Get out into the sun, it's the healer. Jesus heals. There was a queen in Egypt called Arsinoe. You see the ram's horns? Everywhere she is depicted with ram's horns. This is the inscription left by her brother husband after her death in the temple of Mendes. Another god worshipped in the form of a ram. 
Princess, great of favour, sweet of love, beautiful queen, who has received the crowds of Upper and Lower Egypt, whose loveliness fills the palace, beloved of the Ram, priestess of the Ram, sister of the king, wife of the king, his beloved, mistress of the two lands, Arsinoe. His Majesty commanded that her ram image be erected in all temples at the side of the living rams. Check out an article on the internet dealing with Kane Bosom, cannabis in the Old Testament. Hmm. The Bible's full of cannabis. They won't tell you that because they've mistranslated the word cannabis. Exodus 30, 23. Sweet Calamus. Song of Solomon 4.4, 4, it talks about Cain. Cannabis. And these, these plants were offered up to the God, to the Lord, Jehovah. The Lord has always been Jehovah, Jupiter. There's always been the Jehoist and the Eloistic schools of Judaism. One is Saturn. One is Jehovah, Satan and Jehovah. It's just Jupiter and Saturn. Isaiah 43, 26. Sweet Cain. It talks about the sweet Cain, the sweet cannabis. Check these scriptures out, guys. There's a lot to learn about these holy books. Cannabis is the tree of life. That's where we get a lot of Cain... Cain and can words, Vatican, cannibal, can do. <laughs> yeah, it's cannabis. It's all about cannabis. Cannibal is cannabis and bail. It's a holy word. It's a bit like festival. Al. Carneval. The meat of Al, the feast of Al. See, when you have a festival or a carnival, it's a good time, right? Because it's a feast and it's the meat of Al, Allah, God. Jeremiah 6, 20, the good cane, <laughs> the good cannabis. Good on your Bible, you rock. Ezekiel 27, 19. Talking about the articles of Cassia and Cain. So check out that article. I was in Vietnam five years ago, and uh, where I was staying in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, went down to a cafe, and there was this picture. There was always I saw this this painting. I fell in love with it, with the colours. I just loved it. And back then, I didn't know what I know now. But. Uh, I was noticing a while ago, looking at this, I noticed this sine wave going through the woman. I noticed this line going through here. I noticed this gold sun head, like a halo. And I noticed that everything corresponded with the sine wave. You see the sine wave going through the kidneys here. This marker here is going through the kidneys. Now this not might be this might not be deliberate deliberate. I'm not suggesting that it is, uh, but I'm just showing how the sine wave and nature and vibration and ra is subconsciously there. No matter no matter whether this artist had this intention or not, it is there. And you see the you see the fish feet. There's no feet, so that's indicating fish feet, Pisces. You see. The top of the head intersects with the ecliptic and the equator at Aries, and there is the sun, let there be light. Taurus, Gemini perfectly just before the crest of the wave, Cancer in the breast, here, Leo in the heart, crossover in the, in the kidneys, and then you have the rest, Capricorn in the knees, there's Capricorn in the knees, there's a line going straight the way through. And you can see little features that seem to indicate that subconsciously this science is coming through. I saw earlier, Sagittarius, the hips, because hippo is where Sagittarius rules, the hips, hippo. 
See the ram at the top? Pisces at the feet, tied together by the bands. Iridology. Check out iridology, guys. An iridologist, he can tell anything that's wrong with you by going along the zodiac in your eye. Quran. What does the Quran say? By the way, a word for God in the Muslim world is Rahman. R-A-H-M-A-N. Rahman. Or Rahim. By the way, I'm getting this from my friend Farooq. Farooq Ali. Uh, but he's in, now in, he's, he's Pakistani. He's in America and he's helping me with all of these from the Quran. Now, if the Quran is not saying the same thing as the Bible, let's have a look. There's a scripture in the Quran in verse 2, verse 30, and it says, I am about to place a viceroy in the earth. That's talking about Adam being created in the heavens first, because this is Adam Kadmon. This is Adam Kadmon, and we are made in the image of Adam. That's why our body, this is the image. This is the image of Aries, the image of Taurus. We are made in the image of Adam Kadmon. Quran, chapter 7, verse 8. The balance, the balance that day will be true. That's talking about Libra. Virgo, in Quran, chapter 12, verse 4. It's talking about seven green ears of corn. Seven green ears of corn. Just like in the Bible when seven fat calves and seven thin calves. Same story in the Quran. Talking about Virgo. Chapter 15, verse 1. It is we who have set out the zodiacal signs in the heavens and made them fair-seeming to all beholders. And then when you go to the notes, in the most popular Islamic website for notes on the Quran. This is what it says for chapter 15, verse 16. And verily we have placed in the heaven constellations, 12 of them, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Al-Sanbula. Al-Sanbula is her name, Virgo. Al-Sanbula. Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces which are the mansions of the seven orbiting planets. Mars rules Aries. This is in the Quran, guys. They know their science. This is a scientific book. Venus rules Taurus and Libra. Mercury, Gemini and Virgo. The moon, Cancer. The sun, Leo. Jupiter, Sagittarius and Pisces. And Saturn, Capricorn and Aquarius. And we have adorned it with these planets for beholders. Remember the olive oil? Uh, the olive up in the cerebellum? This is chapter 24, verse 3. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The similitude of his light is as a niche wherein is a lamp. The lamp is in the glass. The glass is, as it were, a shining star, kindled from a blessed tree, an olive, neither of the east nor of the west. Chapter 25, verse 61. And I'll read straight from mine. It says, Blessed is he who has made in the heavens, mansions of the stars. Mansions. In Job 38.32, it calls it Maseroth. Same thing. Jesus said, in my Father's house there are many mansions. I am going my way to prepare you for these mansions. And this is what Allah says. These are the notes for that scripture I just read. God exalted be he, says, blessed magnified is he who has placed in the heaven constellations, 12 of them. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, etc., with the rulers Mars, who rules Scorpio, and Aries, Venus, who rules Taurus and Libra. Chapter 41, verse 5. We will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear. We will show them signs in the universe and signs in themselves. The signs in the universe and the signs in themselves is talking to as above, so below. That's your scripture for as above, so below in the Quran, the holy book of the Quran. They're all holy books because they're all talking about simple science. No need to kill each other. Oh, there's a Mormon over there. Well, let's go and kill him. He's not a Jehovah's Witness. Let's condemn him to hell. He's not going into the kingdom. Only Jehovah's Witnesses are going into kingdom. Or the Catholics will tell you that um, salis ecclesia extra non est. So you're all dead. 
because if you're not a Catholic, you get to die. And this is what they're doing. There's 30,000 of these churches. And if you ask one of them, all of these guys are going to hell because they're wrong and they worship the devil. Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that the Mormons are the devil worshippers. Got no idea of this information. No idea because they don't know where to look. Remember I said the best place to hide the true is in plain sight, under your nose. Look at all these things that I've seen. I haven't even scratched the surface. There's so much to go, guys. It's scary. I've got, I'm about oh, 30 presentations behind schedule. I haven't even done, I promised that I was going to do tarot, Kabbalah, crystals, numerology. I've done a bit of numerology today. I've done a bit of sacred geometry today. I've just touched on these things. There is so much to bring out. This is the will of God. God is Gad. Gad is Aries. Gad is the Ram, Aries. These are the two signs that dictate to everything to the, the ten lost tribes of Israel. It talks about the jugular vein, which is, which is associated with the same word as Aquarius. That's chapter 30, verse 1. Please check, get yourself a Quran and check this. This is beautiful. It's amazing. When I first started reading the Quran, I was reading this. First chapter, verse 30. I'd only got 20 seconds into it, right? And this is what I read. He it is who created for you all that is in the earth. Then he turned toward the heavens. And he perfected them as seven heavens. Seven heavens? This is Adam Cadmon. See the twelve? And see the seven? You see where the sun is in the middle there at the phallic? And then there's seven rings. There it is there. Study this, Saturn through to the moon, there's the earth, there's the eighth sphere, the firmament. And this is where we proceed from. We proceed from the atom. We come from Aries. Everything starts at Aries at the number one. And then disunity, and then all of these shapes happen, and then it all folds back into the one. These are positive numbers. One, two, and three are positive. Four, five, and six are negative. Seven, eight, and nine are neutral. That's why the scales are there. The scales are there to balance, it's neutral. And Capricorn is transitional because it's a fish goat. Everything is transitional because when you've got duality, you've got this spot over here and you've got this spot over here. This is positive, this is negative. And this is neutral in the middle. And what's going on in between is transitional. You've got to go through neutral and transit to positive, transit back to neutral, etc., etc. So four is just a negative one. Seven is a neutral one and ten is a transitory one. And, and you can learn this by remembering the tetractus of Pythagoras. That's the tetractus of Pythagoras. One plus two is three, plus three is six, plus four is ten. By reduction, one plus zero equals one. So four will always revert back to one. There's only three numbers in existence. Everything does one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then stops and starts again. Positive, negative, neutral, transitory. That's in the four polarity world. In the dualistic world, it's positive and negative. In the unity world, it's all one, and that's where we're headed, up to Ra, to radiate with Ra, Ray, the one we pray to. That's Abraxas. Ra, Abraxas, seven letters, just like Abraham, and a Ra in the middle. There's the four horses, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. There's four horses in the zodiac, zodiacal sky. There's Pegasus, Monoceros, Centaurus, Sagittarius, and they are all close to these cardinal points because they are the horses that carry the sun, Ra, through the sky. That's the bark of Ra, Abraxas, the sun and the moon. The cock, that's the rooster. Remember Jesus says, Peter, you will betray me three times before the cock crows, before the sun comes up. And Peter, who is Peter? Remember we said Petar, Jupiter? When you go to Rome, you see the statue of Zeus. And you see people lining up to touch that foot. See the foot, how worn it is? It's totally worn out. They kiss it. My father went there in the 70s. He came back and said, huh, 
they don't, because he was a Jehovah's Witness, so I was brought up as a Jehovah's Witness, he says, ha, ah, you see how idealistic the Catholic Church is? They're going to kiss the foot of Peter, which is Zeus, or Jupiter, Jupiter. And you see, there's the woman kissing. Look at that. See the devotion? Oh, they just want to touch that foot of St. Peter. Because Pisces is ruled by Zeus, Jupiter. You see, the feet. You want to touch those feet to be blessed by Pisces, Peter. Have a look at that. That's got all the information you want, much more than this wheel, and that's in Portuguese, in the Portuguese language. Now, I've gone through all of this and checked it. It's all the same stuff. All of this correlates with this, correlates with that, correlates with the Quran. Chapter 53, verse 9. And was at a distance of two bow lengths. That's talking about Sagittarian, Sagittarius. The name is Kaosan or Kaosan, which means Sagittarius. It's in the Quran. When Muhammad was running away from Mecca to the city of Medina, he hid in the cave for three days. That cave was the cave of Taurus. Suar. S-A-U-R. That's Taurus. Muhammad. Pisces. Pisces is in chapter 68, verse 4. Capricorn. Chapter 72, verse 3. Chapter 85, verse 1 in the Quran. There would have been someone uh, historically that would have taken that name, just like there would be a, a historical Jesus, if you, if you like, because the mystery school that was around in the Middle East uh, that was churning out Jesuses uh, was operating until Titus came along and destroyed it. Remember Titus's arch? To, uh, he commemorated the destruction of the Jerusalem and they've got the Jewish menorah, remember that? The arch of Titus that, in Rome? Uh, well, he commemorated that the destruction because what they did was they destroyed one of the uh, Mediterranean's schools where you could go and be initiated and in the in initiation you had to go through ordeals you see so they were actually putting people on crosses <laughs> they were doing it they used to do this in Egypt you know this is why Freemasons you know uh, uh, have got all their strange rituals it's all based on this this is Freemasonry and they have to you know go through the ordeals just like the sun goes through the ordeals betrayal and then you know blindfolded and then killed and then he's got to climb up and 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 run away from his enemies you know satan is always there and, and then he's got to conquer and then you know there's the sign of exaltation of the sun and here is the sign where etc etc right that's what we do in our ordeals now in the middle east that's what they were doing they were bringing people, you know, they had to carry their cross up the mountain and then they had to be hung on the cross for three days. And when they survived, the initiates, they were given a new name and usually that name was Jesus. There's the, um, the Jesus. That's, that's how it was known. It was not a historical person. It's the spiritual person in you. It's your soul. It's who you are. And then when, once, when one has achieved this uh, illumination, one then is able to have the crown chakra pierced and he is an illuminated chief, an illuminati. There it is. There it is. And that, and that is, you know, the vision that St. John had in Revelation. The moon, Mercury, Venus, the sun, Mars, Jupiter and, and Saturn, all described in the first chapter of Revelation where it says, I beheld the Lord and his face shone like the sun. Well, that's the, that's the sun. <laughs> and he had a sword that issued from his mouth. Well, that's Mars. Mars is the martial one. He's ready to fight at the drop of a hat. And he had white hair, you know, because he was the ancient one. Well, that's Saturn, old man Cronus. He's got white hair. It's all grey. He doesn't got any, you know... Nice dyed hair. <laughs> um, the, the belt around the paps. I mean, what's Jesus doing with, you know, with some nice little boobies? Well, and, and what's he doing with a belt around there, like a bra? It's, it's a bra, basically. Well, it's Venus. So he's describing in the first chapter of Revelation. And what happens is these, these are the seven vowels of the creation, the seven planets. These are the Elohim. 
That's the Elohim. He, he was actually describing the Elohim, the, sol the solar system, our big brother as above. Whatever it does, we do. We've got the sun in here. Um, <coughs> Marcelo Ficino has had a lot to say about the sun. I want to share something with you here. The sign in which the sun is exalted, that is Aries. In this way becomes the head of the signs, signifying the head in every living thing. Also, the sign in which the sun is domiciled, that is Leo. It is the heart of the signs and so rules the heart in any living thing. <laughs> I'm stressing that because that's what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this um, in all of my presentations, you see. And uh, the reason being is because that's how the system works. Aries is always the head. And the words for Aries have always meant that. In Jewish, Rosh means the head. In Greek, Krios means the head. In Latin, Primus means the head. That's where the Primavera starts, the first season, the spring. Prima, that's Primus. Right? right ascension begins here. There's a lot of reasons. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> For when the sun enters Leo, it extinguishes in many regions the epidemic of the python's poison. Moreover, the yearly fortune of the whole world will always depend on the sun, on the entry of the sun into Aries. And hence, from this, the nature of any spring may properly be judged. Just as the quality of summer is judged from the ingress of the sun into Cancer, or that of autumn from its entrance into Libra, and from the coming into Capricorn the quality of winter is discovered. These things are gleaned from the figures of the heavens present at the time, at that time. Since time depends on motion, the sun distinguishes the four seasons of the year through the four cardinal signs. Similarly, when the sun returns by the exact degree and minute to its place in the nativity of any person, his share of fortune is unfolded through the whole year. It happens in this way because the movement of the sun is the first and chief of the planets is very simple, as Aristotle says. Neither falling away from the middle of the zodiac, as the others do, nor retrograding. You see, all the other planets retrograde. And what's retrograde? Well, you know, if you're watching the planets, you'll, you see Saturn is doing this, then all of a sudden you see him go like this. And then he goes back forward and he goes, he goes direct. So he's, he's transiting a sign and then all of a sudden he goes back a few degrees. And you go, what the hell? And you're watching this, you know. You, wow. <laughs> I was watching that last year with Saturn in Virgo. Right, it goes all the way to speaker, then it goes back the other way in, in Libra here. Virgo and Libra, Saturn's been here for the last couple of years, right? Uh, so it retrograded, it went back to Virgo and then it goes back and now it's in Libra, right? Um, well, it's still physically in Virgo, but anyway, won't go into that because it needs a lot of explaining. <laughs> but um, in our, in our uh, vortex solar system, you see the planets are all doing this and of course, that's why every orbit is elliptical because they're all occurring in cones. Every orbit. There's not a, an orbit out there that is not elliptical. And because it's doing this, you see, it's conical. So um, what happens is um, uh, when, let's say, this, this will be Earth, here's the Sun, there's Mercury, Venus and the Earth, say we're about here and Saturn is coming around and, and say Mars is coming around here, right? Because we are travelling fast along this way, we are heading in that direction, and Mars is, is going around this curve, he will seem to be going backwards. You see? They don't retrograde physically. They don't sort of stop, you know, and then go back and then, well, that was good and interesting little retrograde. That was very kinky. They don't do that. <laughs> but um, that's how it works because it's all, we're all following the sun in its cone, and the sun is the leader, and all the planets follow. It's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. It's Little Red Riding Hood. It's Hercules. Samson. Samson pulls down the gates of Gaza. 
it's Troy, it's, uh, it's uh, Helen of Troy. Helen of Troy is the, um, is the moon. And um, <clears throat> where's my, oh, there it is. Now this guy, Thomas Taylor, he was interpreting all the, um, all the philosophers, right? And he's the best one. But he's talking about, um, he's talking about uh, Troy. Of course, you see, we, there, there are scholars who really believe and insist that Troy was physically on the historical plane. It's good when you, when you have intelligent people, you know, shedding the light on, on all of these. You know, like you have, how many books have been written, you know, trying to prove that Jesus was historical and etc. and the apostles and everything like that. You know, but then you get uh, one great book that comes along, like uh, Alvin Boyd Coons, that one, and uh, dismantles it with proofs. Absolute proofs. Well, what he's saying here about um, the Trojan War, etc., if I can find it. And I've got so many good points here. It's just beautiful the way this guy um, explains, explains the myths, you know. Oh, there it is. Of course, it's in um, The Wandering of Ulysses, okay? This is one of the books that he translated. And he says, The Trojans are called genuine. Uh, for all the lives which subsist about bodies and irrational souls are favourable and attentive to their proper matter. On the contrary, the Greeks are rational souls. Coming from Greece, i.e. from the intelligible into matter. You see, so it's talking about this. The Trojan War is talking about man. And the Greeks, of course, are going to call themselves the, the rational ones. Coming in and experiencing the experience of matter. Hence the Greeks are called foreign, but vanquish the Trojans as being of a superior order. But they fight with each other about the hel image of Helen, as the poet says, about the image of Aeneas. Helen signifying intelligible beauty, being a certain vessel attracting to itself intellect. An efflux, therefore, of this intelligible beauty is imparted to matter through Venus, and about this efflux of beauty, the Greeks fight with the Trojans, rational with irrational lives. And those indeed that oppose and vanquish matter return to the intelligible world, which is their true country. You see, so when Ulysses spends 10 years returning to his true country, that's 10,000 years of incarnation it's talking about. That's talking about us. 10 is just, a, it's, it's not 10 years literally, it's a symbolic number. Um, according to the, um, as therefore the prophet in the tenth book of the Republic, sorry, and those indeed that oppose and vanquish matter return to the intelligible world, with, which is their true country, but those who do not, as in the case with the multitude, are bound to matter. As therefore the prophet in the tenth book of the Republic previously to the descent of souls, announces to them how they may return to their pristine felicity according to periods of a thousand and ten thousand years. Thus also Calchus predicts to the Greeks their return in ten years, the number ten being the symbol of a perfect period. And as in the lives of souls, some are elevated through philosophy, others through the amatory art, and others through the royal and warlike disciplines. So with respect to the Greeks, some act with rectitude through prudence, but others through war or love, and their return is different according to their different pursuits. And that's how they all return back to Greece. Now, the best of the Jewish wisdom that you can get will come from the Sefer Yetzirah and the Zohar. Okay, these books perfectly explain all of this science. Okay. And um, in the Zohar, it's interesting to note in uh, one, of the, um, one of the books, in the chapters in the Zohar, it talks about how to look at the Torah. And in here it, it explains that we must not look at the Bible, the Torah, as a literal document. Because the Jews, the Jews gave us these silly stories on a literal plane, they're silly. But they're wise stories. You know, they're hiding a great kernel of truth 
You know, like a silly story like Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men uh, couldn't put Humpty together again. Well, the origin of this is, is very simple, um, you know, to uh, people who are thinking. They don't uh, need to, um, you know, do too, do too much thinking. Uh, that would be a happy egg, wouldn't it? The full moon, and in the ovaries that would be the egg. Right? So the moon, she climbs up. New moon, she climbs. There's quarter moon, quarter sun. And she keeps waxing. And finally she gets into her kingdom. She's full and glowing. That's Mary Magdalene. That's Helen of Troy. This is Troy. This is Troy. Right? And when Humpty Dumpty falls off the wall, there's no king that can put it back together again. Because that corresponds to the menstruation cycle. That egg's a goner. Right? So you see, all of the, all of the characters are there. There's not one that is not there. And uh, this is what they're saying in, 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 the, in the Zohar. Um, Woe to the human being who says that the Torah presents mere stories and ordinary words. If so, we could compose a Torah right now with ordinary words and better than all of them. In other words, he's saying there's more to it than just ordinary little stories that you can mock. You know, when you hear about Samson killing his thousand with, a, with an ox, and Jonah, um, you know, being um, swallowed by a whale for three days, etc. You know, please don't laugh at us. Even Origen in the, in the second century, the Alexandrian uh, Gnostic Christian said, you know, they're just stories. They are stories that hide a deeper truth. Josephus said it. Uh, Philo Judaeus, um, Philo. The, the great first century scholar. He said that everything in the, in the Bible, in fact, he wrote works called allegory, explaining the allegories in the Bible. The Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 4 talks about the allegory of Sarah and Haggai because um, Sarah would be the moon and the moon is the, the mother of spiritual Israel. Right? She would be, she would be Isis. But the earth, Hagar, she is the mother of the slaves because the earthbound people are slaves. Whereas spiritual ones that go to Sarah, you see? And where do you find Sarah? Well, she's on, she's, she's on top of the mountain. They are, that's the spiritual, our spiritual mother, you see? And when Mount Moses cli climbs Mount Sinai, that's the mountain of sin, the mountain of the moon. Another word for moon is sin. And Sinai comes from that word. Um, you see, it says, Fools of the world look only at the garment, the story of the Torah. They know nothing more. Um, Thomas Paine, who was a hermetist, I'm going to wind up in five minutes. Thomas Paine, who was a hermetist, and one of the founders of the Republic, of the Hermetic Republic of the United States of America. And he said, As to the Christian system of faith, it appears to me as a species of atheism, a sort of religious denial of God. It professes to believe in a man rather than in God. It is a compound made up chiefly of manism, but with but little deism. And it is near to atheism as twilight is to darkness. It introduces between men... It introduces between man and his maker an opaque body, which it calls a redeemer. As the moon introduces her opaque self between the earth and the sun, and it produces by this means a religious or an irreligious eclipse of light. It has put the whole orbit of reason to shade. The effect of this obscurity has been that of turning everything upside down and representing it in reverse. And among the revolutions it has thus magically produced, it has made a revolution in theology. As to the theology that is now studied in its place, it is the study of human opinions and of human fancies concerning God. That's all it is. You go to church, you go to Jehovah's Witnesses, human opinions, buffoons. Go to the Mormons, same crap. Seventh-day Adventists, all of them, they've all got their patented version of the same 
rubbish lie from, from Rome. <clears throat> it is not the study of God himself in the works that he has made, but in the works or writings that man has made. That's what the churches are up to. Yeah. And it is not among the least of the mischiefs that the Christian system has done to the world that it has abandoned the original and beautiful system of theology, the Prisca Theologia. He knew it. And to make room for a bag, a hag of superstition. And you need to read what, um, what he says. He calls Christianity a dag on the, the spiritual evolution of the human race. A dag, like a sheep has a dag on its bum. That's what Christianity is. It's like a dag dragging us back into the world of superstition. Killing scientists like Galileo Galilei and murdering prophets of this true wisdom. <clears throat> the, age of ignorance, the age of ignorance commenced with the Christian system. But the Christian system laid all waste. And if we take our stand about the beginning of the 16th century, we look back through that long chasm to the time of the ancients as over a vast sandy desert it, in which not a shrub appears to intercept the vision to the fertile hills beyond. It is an inconsistency scarcely possible to be credited that anything should exist under the name of a religion that held it to be a religious, to study and contemplate the structure of the universe that God made. So it's saying, he's saying that Christianity has been opposed to the study of the universe, how God made it. It's been opposed. That's the enemy, Thomas Paine. That's what caused Teddy Roosevelt to call him a filthy little atheist a hundred years later. Because, of course, of course Teddy was... Uh, you know, a, a, um, a corporate buffoon who uh, wouldn't know what an atheist is. You know, he wouldn't know, he wouldn't know what Thomas Paine was anyway. He's just happy to vomit out his rubbish, like all the, all the rest who, um, who came subsequent to the, um, the period of 1871 when they founded the Corporation of the United States, which is not the hermetic republic, constitutional republic of the United States of America. You see, everywhere where Hermes goes, he brings liberation. He did so to the Waldenses and the Lollards and the Huguenots and the Sicinians and the Collegents and the Anabaptists, etc. How many organisations, the, the Bogomils, the Cathars, the Albigenses, the Jews in Spain that were persecuted through the Inquisition. That was eight, nine, a thousand years ago. And uh, then the Renaissance came and they squashed that with the Reformation and the Counter-Reformation. And then the Republic came and set itself up. And this is all hermetic. But then the Vatican saw what was happening over in the New Lands and it sent its banksters over to trick people. Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States, says, I killed the banks. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said, uh, democracy is mob rule. We heard what Thomas Paine says. Thomas Paine also says that the Christian religion is a parody on the sun. I've got all those quotes. I've done them in other presentations. So these Hermetists tried to save the new world, but the Vatican came, came a calling. After the death of Abraham Lincoln, they set up in Washington, D.C., a corporation called the United States, headed by the Vatican. That's why you have the two fasci in the Congress in America. The fasci belong to Rome. Rome tells you where it's ruling and who it's ruling and sodomizing. It makes fools and slaves out of the world. So this information is the information that frees and I hope that you've enjoyed the presentation and urge you all to, um, to continue studying this stuff. You know, grab, grab a, a book, a notepad and, and, and do this. Do the zodiac, this wheel, this is the wheel that we were blessed with. That's why this is the most known symbol in the universe. This is our science and no one shall take it away from us. It's coming back and it will absolutely free mankind in the very, very near future. And it will destroy the fictions of false religion 
absolutely obliterate them. It was prophesied. Hesiod prophesied it. Hermes prophesied it. They all said it. All the prophecies know that when this age comes and Saturn returns in Aquarius, big time truth. He's a truth dealer. Oh yeah, that's why he's got the scythe. He gives you life in truth and he takes it away. Everything is just with Saturn. So um, enjoy the Prisca Theologia and uh, please uh, continue to be prosperous in this information and spread it abo abroad and we can uh, help our brothers. And with that I'd like to close and encourage uh, anyone out there who's uh, able to um, understand what I'm trying to achieve with all of this and in particular with the 48 constellations. Um, that I want to actually get uh, anyone who knows how to do uh, graphics and has equipment and time and is able to help, I would really like to uh, reach out to um, anyone out there that can help me to put together a video that will have all of the stories, all of the legends, all of the Bibles and Gospels and mythologies, all of them interpretable by one short journey through the zodiac and the sun going through the zodiac from Aries and we'll be able to see all the Bible characters and all the mythological characters in there. This is what I'd like to achieve. So if anyone out there is able to um, donate time and resources and any sort of skills to help me put that together, please contact me at universaltruthschool.com. Thank you.